Minnesota Vikings are playoff bound again, primarily because of number 10 quarterback, Brand Tarkenton. But great as he is, Tark can't do it alone. He must have this man. Number 44, Chuck Foreman, the great all-purpose back, on his way to another 1,000-yard game season. But tonight, the two must go against this defense, the 49ers, with 49 sacks of the opposition quarterback thus far this year. In this case, against Richard Todd and Cleveland Gillum. And in that case, against Bad Hayden, it's number 53, Tommy Hart. And how this gang loves to gang tackle, like here. So tonight, the Vikes against the 49ers. Stand by, 10 seconds there. Oh, here we go. You all start. Camera two, ready your opening shot. Oh, give me the opening three. Stand by the roll cage. Roll cage. Two seconds in there. Two, one. Take camera two. You go. ABC's Monday Night Football, the Minnesota Vikings, and the San Francisco 49ers is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Lincoln Mercury, who invites you to inspect one of America's outstanding collections of fine cars, now at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Look for an interesting game tonight between the Minnesota Vikings, the champions of the Central Division NFC, and the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers are still alive in their division, but only remotely so. Why? There are the standings. Los Angeles must lose its two remaining games. San Francisco must win its remaining three beginning tonight to be in the playoffs. And Los Angeles has to beat Atlanta and then Detroit at Detroit, a game you'll be seeing on Monday Night Football, while San Francisco must beat the Vikes tonight, then go on to defeat San Diego and New Orleans. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. And quickly, let's look at why this game is important, even from the Minnesota point of view, because the Vikes have already clinched. They want to win every remaining game, thus ensuring to themselves the home field or home crowd advantage, as you will, in the playoffs for each and every playoff game of which they are a part. As for the 49ers, we've already stated their case. Look what's happened to the 49ers. Midway in the season, standing at 6-1, and one, on the record, the most improved team in the NFL, and then catastrophe. The breathtaking overtime loss to St. Louis. Then the humdinger to Washington, 24-21. After that, the upset by the Atlanta Falcons and then the crunching defeat at the hands of Los Angeles a week ago. So they're a troubled team, and the fans have seemingly become disenchanted with the great acquisition for this year, quarterback Jim Plunkett, who in a sense came back home. And Frank will be telling you more about Plunkett a little bit later in the telecast. Right now, though, let's bring in my colleague, Alex Karras. Well, you see, Howard, if they would have beaten all those teams that they just lost to, folks, they wouldn't be booing Plunkett here in San Francisco. They would be putting him up on great stilts and carrying him around and saying, yippee, Jim Plunkett. But unfortunately, they lost three games that they could have won, and it didn't happen. But what I'm trying to say is, I think San Francisco should be very proud of the way their team has played this year. They've been in most all the games they're playing. They're the most improved ball club in the league. As far as I'm concerned, I'm out here to see a pretty good football game tonight. Then you don't think the 49ers, in the wake of four consecutive defeats, came apart? No, I think they're, they're the most improved ball club in the league, and I think they know it as a team, and I think the coach has done a terrific job with this ball club. You know, I've seen the 49ers in years and years and years. This is the best, most improved 49er team I've seen on, the, on this side of the West Coast. Everyone agrees that Monty Clark, former offensive line coach for the Dolphins, is a brilliant young coach and has done a fine job. The 49ers have featured the sack. We said that to start the telecast. What is, by the way, what is that cigar? I, I quit smoking, and I don't want to suck my thumb on, on, on the air. Okay, Cedric Hardman. 
absent tonight, out for the rest of the year. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna hurt the team a little bit uh, as far as rushing the passer is concerned, but they do it well, and uh, they, if they're having any problems at all on that defensive line tonight, you'll see that when they do rush the, the, uh, the, uh, the quarterback, they have a tendency to get out of their lanes a little bit, take a little bit more of a chance, and you can run once in a while on them, and that's the only thing I really think is at fault as far as the defense is concerned. I think we're going to see a good ball game tonight. The Vikings, I think, want to continue we, uh, winning, and that's the way it is. Okay, Alex, thank you very much. Let's bring in the gift. He talked about the fans booing you want to no. no i'll take my thumb you know something you remember when they booed brody here they booed willie mays here now they boo bobby mercer here what effect is they this boo us here <laughs> what effect is it why should this place be different uh, all right tell us what you've got to well, say alex mentioned uh, the pass rush that uh, the 49ers are trying to put on minnesota but they're putting it on a very unusual man fran tarkenton number 10 came up in 1961. He owns just about every passing record there is in the book. He is indeed on his way to the Hall of Fame. He has passed for over 23 and almost 23 and a half miles during his career, a remarkably gifted athlete. Of course, Fran Tarkman has a great gifted athlete working that backfield with him. That's, of course, Chuck Foreman heading for another 1,000-yard year, but he's a great receiver, number one in the NFC after 11 games. Now, we don't quite know for sure who's going to be quarterbacking for the 49ers. Of course, Jim Pluckett should be there, but he has a pulled muscle in his rib cage, and they have Marty Darmers. But we are looking for a youngster out of the University of Arkansas, Scott Bull. Scott Bull has thrown the ball four times in National Football League competition. He's big, he's 6'5 and 210 pounds, but he has never faced the likes of the Minnesota Vikings. They also have a gifted runner, Delvin Williams, three years out of Kansas. So we have a lot of talent on the field tonight. Should be a good football game. Sit back and enjoy it with us. The original Continental was the only American luxury car ever honored for design excellence at New York's Museum of Modern Art. Now, Continental Mark V. Mark V. In the tradition of excellence of the original Continental, yet different from every mark that's come before it. To its owner, Continental Mark V is more than a new car. It's a mark of tradition. You take only what the sea will give you. And for the last nine days, she's given a lot. Now comes Miller time. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you got the time, we got the beer. Miller Baby has something every battery should have. A full lifetime warranty printed right on the battery. And I sell it at a fair price. It's Sunoco's best, True Blue. If it ever fails to hold a charge for you in your present car, Sunoco will replace it free with proof of purchase, except if damaged by accident or abuse. When you drive into Sunoco, you get something else. Me. And I'll test any battery you drive in with free. I can be very friendly, very friendly. Yes, I can. Do I pass or run with the ball? Time for decisions. If you're a teenager, you're near a decision on drinking. Now, I'm not telling you what to decide, but most young people know that drinking too much too often is not grown up, whatever your age. To help you make responsible decisions, write for information to Education Commission of the States, Box 687, Denver, Colorado, 80201. Back at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, the Minnesota Vikings, 9-1-1 one, and one on the season. They've clinched their central division of the NFC. They go against the San Francisco 49ers at one time, 6-1 and one on the season. They fell apart. They've lost their last four games. They lost big to the Los Angeles Rams only last week. They're trying to get it together. They changed their quarterbacks, and they're going to bring out a youngster, a Scott Bull. Scott Bull will be opening for the 49ers tonight. Down in the field, the Minnesota Vikings have won the toss and dropping deep is number 85, the speedster. He's back there with Leonard Willis, number 80, and set to kick off for the San Francisco 49ers, Steve Mickemeyer. The 49ers are not dead, as Howard mentioned at the top of the show, but you could say they're a little bit comatose because they will have to win all the rest of them while the Los Angeles Rams would have to lose all theirs, and that's not going to happen. Why didn't I say that? Comatose. Lock that down in the new Gifford Dictionary. Steve Mickemeyer. Now, 
Minnesota as Sammy White in a single safety, and he'll take it at his own goal line. Leonard Willis oh, out oh, to the 17-yard oh. line, and he is popped there by a hustling bunch of 49ers. And opening now is Fran talking to the quarterback. He's in there with Chuck Foreman and Brent McClanahan, the wide receivers, as you read them. Sammy White, he's the rookie from Grambling. Ahmad Rashad, number 28, the other wide receiver, the tight end, is Stu Voigt. Francis Tarkington. And he has a packet of records. Just about everything in the NFL record book now belongs to this man who came up in 1961, Fran Tarkington. First and 10, and out over the 20-yard line goes Brent McClanahan. As we look at the offensive line, there's Stu Boyd at the tight end. They're good. They're a veteran line. They're going to be, they're going to really have, they'll be tested tonight because this front four really likes to rush the passer. And as I said on the opening show, that's what they really like to do. They like to knock the quarterback down. The only guy that isn't on, intact there is, of course, Cedric Hartman, who's out, I guess, for the rest of the year. 49 times they've sacked the opposition quarterbacks. The only team better, Baltimore, they have 52. Second down and eight. Parkinson up on top. Incomplete the attempt to Rashad. And let's take a look at the linebackers. All right, quickly, the linebacking core, Skip Vanderbund, who has a habit of being where the ball is. Bruce Ely, a second-year man from Ohio State, obtained from Miami. Shula let him go at a time when he thought he could afford to. Would probably like to have him back now. And Dave Washington. And in the backfield, the great cornerback veteran Jimmy Johnson. 16 years in the league. Right, Bruce Taylor, Mel Phillips, Ralph McGill. Yard line, and we're just underway from Candlestick Park in San Francisco. This is Parkinson, and he has Sammy White all alone. And Sammy White could not find the handle. Hustling back there, number 49, Ralph McGill, and the man we were speaking of a moment ago, Jimmy Johnson, number 37. Well, this is a matchup as we look at it again, Frank and Alex, that we'll be watching closely all night because Sammy White will put the veteran Jimmy Johnson to the test. Believe me. White, a dazzling rookie. Ball was underthrown. He had his men beaten there, both McGill and Jimmy Johnson. But White very much in the running for Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year honors in the NFC. Neil Claybo, he hits him about 39 yards. Tony Leonard is deep. And Claybo got all the foot into this one. Leonard all the way back to his own 33-yard line. And Leonard out over the 45 to the 48-yard line. 47-yard putt. Nice return by Leonard in San Francisco. Has good field position. We'll tell you again, they're opening with a rookie quarterback, a sixth-round draft pick out of Arkansas. They took Arkansas to the Cotton Bowl. There he is. He's big. He's 6'5 and 2'11. Back there with him, Delvin Williams. He has 859 yards rushing, looking for 1,000. Wilbur Jackson, the wide receivers. Lash, 87. He came from Minnesota last year. And the veteran, Gene Washington, number 18. First and 10. The ball at the 48-yard line of the 49ers. Bull hands off to Wilbur Jackson, and he is all the way down to the 45-yard line. Well, make it the 46-yard line, and the Vikings gain a five, second down and five as we look at the offensive line for the 49ers. Tom Mitchell, they just somehow can never get rid of Tom Mitchell. He just keeps beating out the better ball players year after year, either with Baltimore now with the 49ers. He's number 84. Second down and five. Kenny Harrison, number 83, is in the ball game as a wide receiver. They're both at the top of the screen. Getting the ball. And breaking up the middle, Del Williams, Delvin Williams, as he likes to be called. He's down to the 42-yard line, short of the first down. And It'll you know, be third down in a yard. And you know what? You put these guys together, and it's spells social security. <laughs> but they don't play that old. I'll tell you that. They're terrific. Well, as old as they might be, the linebackers are young. You just saw Matt Blair, and the only veteran in there was Hilgenberg, although Seaman could now be characterized as a veteran. He's young. Matt Blair is brilliant. And the two Wright brothers... In the, the two right boys, I mean, in the defensive secondary. We'll get some more details here. Third and one, this is Jackson. He has the first down, much more. Down to the 34-yard line. Paul Krause made the stop, and Wilbur Jackson, third-year man, Alabama, gets the first down for San Francisco. 
Now, if you watch Jim Marshall in, in Hilgenberg, I think really you, you might think Hilgenberg was the one who's, who caused this, but he really wasn't. Marshall took a real inside release. Hilgenberg met the challenge right there, lifted the blocker up, but I think Marshall was just down a little too far to create a natural hole. And a boy, I think Wally did a good job. First and 10, San Francisco, 34-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. Here comes Delvin Williams. Big hole, tremendous hole, and Williams is picks up about eight yards, getting down to the about the 26-yard line, and is going to be second down and two. The interesting thing here, Alex, in the early going, they've run four plays, good gains on each of them all on the ground has been the charge of that offensive line, which was roundly criticized after the debacle against Los Angeles a week ago. Second down and two, ball 26-yard line. And off goes to Jackson, and Jackson has the first down. Out around the 23-yard line. So San Francisco moving well on the ground, and this man, well, Howard, who could coach offensive line play better than him? You're right about that. No, you're not right about that. I've changed my mind, but I did plump <laughs> for him. For three years, when he was assisting Shula at Miami, if anybody can get the most out of an offensive line, it's Monty Clark. He's in the same mold as Chuck Knox, the L.A. coach. And many that times, forgot. many times, an all-pro at that position offensively. First and ten for the 49ers, Delvin Williams. And 49ers blasting big holes and finding openings from the outside. And Williams... Inside the 15-yard line, short of the first down. Now let's watch the Hilkenberg again, the right right linebacker line play. He comes in, cradles that blocker. Now he gave a little bit too much that time, so he comes back on him. But all in all, you know he it's really a pretty good play. He cradles him. He doesn't give anything to the outside. Second down and one. 49ers on the ground and moving it well. Scott Gold, the quarterback. Another big ball. Jackson, look out, and he's inside the five down to the two. Oh, are they getting off that mark? Well, that offensive line. Huge that's, hole. That's the problem, of course, is that Minnesota has locked it up in their division. Where the heck is the incentive right now? And it's harder for a coach to get up this kind of team than, say, the San Francisco 49ers, who really would like to win as many games as they can win. I look at that hole again. That Duck Sutherland just missed a the tackle there right at the line of scrimmage. No one even blocked him. Well, and Wilbur Jackson took it all the way to the two. Wilbur Jackson is a quality running back, uh, back, Alex. We first saw him in the Sugar Bowl game in 73, that classic game when Notre Dame beat Alabama. Jackson was the star of Alabama. There's Bud Grant. He's been the winningest coach in the NFL since 1968, won eight of his last nine division titles. A disciplined man, often referred to as a stoic, called humorless by many who don't know him because the man in his own way has a quiet, dry, satirical sense of humor that's absolutely delightful. And the only color he has is his varicose veins, Howard. Oh, come on. He's a good guy. Oh. Really is. And one other thing, you talk about incentive for Minnesota. They want to win every remaining game, Alex. I don't agree with you. To get the home field or home crowd well, advantage in the that's all about players. football. People don't agree with people, Howard. <laughs> that's what Scott Bull has done thus far this year. We, we, he's not played much. Plunkett has gone most of the way. Marty Domries is on the bench. He's played the rest of the time when this youngster from Arkansas was not in there. Now, I'll tell you again, he's big. He's a good athlete. As a junior at Arkansas, he played tight end, fullback, linebacker. If you wonder why we're talking to you so much, we have a referee's timeout down on the field as we look down from the Goodyear Blimp Columbia. Captain Tom Mattis up there with our cameraman, Dave Hilmer. First and goal. The ball at the two-yard line. There is no score. We're just underway. gets the call and now there's a score. Wilbur Jackson off the right side puts the 49ers on the scoreboard first. They're tippy toeing in there, Howard. Unfortunately, that defensive line is not really not really trying to rock and sock tonight. And if that continues, the 49ers are going to eat them right up. Well, what's interesting there is the offensive line charge was led by the two guards, Steve Lawson and Andy Maurer, both of whom came to the 49ers from the Vikings. Steve Mickemeyer for the conversion. Oh, oh, I love to do that, Frank. Helpless, those centers. 
Mark Mullaney moving across the line of scrimmage a little too quickly. Frank, guys like Tarkenton and Foreman, wouldn't their pride necessitate within themselves putting forth to the uttermost even though they've clinched the Central Division title? Absolutely. There will be yeah, no but psychologically, I think there's a psychological block there. <laughs> well, they would like to play their playoffs in front of their home crowd. Of course, they clinched last week against Green Bay. They're veterans. And Mickemeyer drills it through. The 49ers have a 7 to nothing lead. And a surprising turn of events. The 49ers scoring on their very first possession. We'll be back. Here comes the boss. The boss of the nation's largest airline. You can tell by the way he's treated, he's someone special. We print his ticket in 10 seconds because the boss doesn't like to wait. His bag is tracked by special computer. You don't lose the boss's bag. He likes room, so the nation's largest airline gives him more wide bodies. And on 727s, more carry-on space. More than any other airline. The boss gets his choice of meals. A full meal or a diet meal. The boss is entertained with movies, stereo, and now his favorite television shows. The airline is united. The boss is you, the business traveler. You're a big part of our business, so we treat you like the important person you are. By the friendly skies of United. Where you're the boss. Minnesota was offsides on the conversion attempt by Mickamire, which was good. San Francisco gets a five-yard edge. They'll kick from their 40. Steve Mickemeyer with Leonard Willis at his goal line. This is Willis, and Mickemeyer drives him to the back of the end zone and out of the end zone, touchback. Minnesota will take over, first and 10, at their own 20-yard line. And, of course, we're in San Francisco, and next week we'll be back. It'll be Oakland and Cincinnati. And well, I guess you could call it a must game for the Cincinnati Bengals. Oakland has clinched their division. They have the finest record in pro football today. 11-1, and, and what a game that's going to be. Kenny Stapler. Kenny Anderson, two great quarterbacks. On first and ten, Foreman around the left side, and a nifty bit of running as Foreman collects five yards. It'll be second down and five. There's Wilbur Jackson, the young man from the University of Alabama, trained by Paul Bear Bryan, about whom we talked earlier. Here's Wilbur going in for the touchdown. You can't key alone on Delvin Williams because of the quality of Wilbur Jackson. Two quality running backs belonging to the 49ers, part of their improvement. Second down and five. <laughs> down, trips and lunges forward out to the 33-yard line. And what another fine year the Foreman is having. 942 yards coming into tonight's game. He's an incredible back. All-purpose value, as Frank mentioned earlier, had 50 receptions going into tonight's game. Sammy White and Ahmad Rashad, each having great years, have 39, but Foreman leads the way, invariably in the crisis. Fran will dump off to Chuck or to his favorite tight end, Stu Voigt. First and 10, Minnesota, their own 34-yard line. Again, Foreman. Foreman gets another first down. That was Bruce Taylor, a number 44, missing the tackle at the line of scrimmage. And that's not hard to do against this man. Yeah, we talked about that defensive uh, 49er line uh, about rushing the passer, and they do it well. But what happens occasionally is when they're trying to rush the passion, they get very conscious of the fact that they want to get to the outside or to the inside, and they open up natural holes. Now, that particular play right there, the right end, Tony Klein, went down a little bit, and he should have stayed to the outside and didn't. And credit Brent McClanahan with a fine block. Ball at the 47-yard line, first and 10, Minnesota. This is McClanahan, and McClanahan over the midfield mark, down around the 48-yard line, gain of about five. Now make it four. It'll be second down and six. Jimmy Webb, number 74, made the stop. That happens to be one of the finest young men I have ever known in sports. Jim Plunkett, who is having the devil's own time here. He was happy to come back home. You remember his All-America at Stanford? Led 
Stanford team, the two Rose Bowl victories. Here, they're booing him out of existence. He's not in the lineup, however, because of a pulled muscle in his ribcage. With second down and six. Foreman again. And Foreman ridden out of bounds, down around the 44-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be third down, a long yard. Cleveland Ilum was over there, along with Bruce Ilya. Now, Bruce Ilya, number 55, is at middle linebacker for the 49ers because Frank Nunley, who ordinarily would be there, has a fractured cheekbone. Also, Chuck is oh, running. That's the truth. Yeah. On with the Raiders. I love that ball club. They, they throw the ball, they run the ball, they score a lot of points. Alex, they're running at Tony Klein's side, number 82, the lad who had double knee surgery, who used to be with Oakland, had five years there. Third down, long yard. And Foreman has the first down, down to the 41-yard line, and the 49ers now giving the, or rather the Vikings giving the 49ers a workout on the ground. Bruce Ilya made the stop. Bruce Ilya is not a big man. He, He's about 217 pounds. Originally started out with Miami. Here he is, number 55. Went to Tampa in the expansion draft and then came to San Francisco. Foreman now needs 24 yards to join five other NFL running backs at 1,000 yards for the season. First and 10. McClanahan. Lanahan gets four yards. It'll be second down and six. Ball down around the 37-yard line. Interesting, isn't it, Giff? Sir Francis hasn't thrown a pass yet. Even as San Francisco, he threw two, actually, but in the real sense, this has been a drive on the ground. Much in the manner of San Francisco's drive. Now, they have a fine offensive line. Ed White is back in the lineup after missing last week. He's that right guard that played across the way in California. He's number 62 and one of the best in the business. Second down and six. Foreman gets the call, and Foreman behind Ed White and Ron Yuri, number 73, the all-pro tackle. Gets down to the 34-yard line. It's going to be third down and two. Tommy Hart made the stop. Now, now they're going to the right side, have gone that way the last two plays, and they're double-teaming Tommy Hart, number 53. Watch closely here. Gary and Ed White, they're big. They just want a big old human wall out there. Third and two. Tarkington. Tarkington just jumps it off. In the general area was Foreman. see a flag so it'll be fourth down and two everything going so well on the ground Fran thought he'd change up well it's tough to sack Francis as you will see right here but attacking him most of all is the second year man from Tennessee State whom we caught for the first time when San Francisco beat Los Angeles 16 to nothing 72 Cleveland Elam and there's no question about it Scouts around the NFL consider that young man a superstar of the future. He is a tremendous pass rusher. Here's Fred Cox, 51-yard field goal attempt. His longest of the year thus far has been 49 yards. It won't reach. Touchback, and the 49ers will have a first and 10. They'll begin from their own 20-yard line. This season at Sears, Johnny Miller menswear is saying fashion in a new and very smart way. You buy finely tailored garments separately, then combine them to make any number of sensibly priced outfits. Rich colors, handsome patterns, they all work together flawlessly. Johnny Miller menswear. It brings to Sears what Miller the man brings to golf. Winning style. Exclusively in selected larger Sears stores. This engine is weaving its way through the mountains of Oregon and pulling the incredible weight of 13 cars with a strap woven from Flex 10 Tire Cord, a Goodyear exclusive. Tire Cord is the main reinforcing agent in a tire. 
Flex 10 tire cord is made from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. Tensile strength is only one of the many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, the tire cord of the future from Goodyear. We're back at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Capacity here is 61,000. As we look around, we can see there are some empty seats before tonight's game. The Management said there were some 4,000 seats available. There's Chuck Foreman on the bench, but a tremendously gifted athlete. He can do it all. And he does it all. 49ers, first and 10, their own 33-yard line. That was a line of scrimmage from where Fred Cox tried his field goal. Very cool night here in San Francisco. Temperatures expected to drop into the 30s. No win. Delvin Williams, right side. Trips up and gets about a yard out of it. It'll be second down at nine. Jeff Seaman was over there. Thirty-second clock is not working here at Candlestick Park, so that will be controlled on the field. Referee tonight, Don Wedge. Second down and nine. The ball resting at the 35-yard line. Kenny Harrison, number 83, the rookie from SMU, is a one wide receiver. He's alternating, bringing plays in with Gene Washington. Drop play is Jackson. And Wilbur Jackson. First forward for about four yards. It's going to be third down and about four. And we can take a look at that sign and tell you that Saturday night at 9 Eastern time, Arkansas will be at Texas. And then a Saturday afternoon, some interesting college football. We'll tell you more about it during the course of the game. Two Division II championship playoffs, semifinals, and a Division III championship final. Third down and six. Ball at the 38-yard line. Reverse to Jackson. And Jackson makes a tremendous oh. move, gets the first down out close to midfield. And he was trapped at the line of scrimmage and somehow got through. You won't see a better run than that many times anywhere. While it didn't go for 40, 50, or 60 yards, it took as much effort and as much running skill to get the distance needed for the first down and then some as you would find in many much longer runs. Carl Eller was all set, lined him up in his sights, made a dive, and came up with air. First and 10, the 49ers grinding it out against the Minnesota Vikings. Jackson again, and Jackson gets about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Matt Blair, number 59, made the stop. And you see, Howard, when you see all those missed tackles, you know something's going on mentally with the ball club. And right now, as I said before, I just don't think psychologically they're up for this ball game. I would have to say, in the wake of what we're watching, that you've got a point. You've won me over. Thanks a lot. Ball at the 47-yard line, second down and seven. Delvin Williams, and Delvin Williams breaks his own tackles, look out, and it's Bobby Bryant that holds on and saves the touchdown, but Delvin Williams is all the way down to the 17-yard line, and Delvin Williams is closing in on his own 1,000 yards, 30-yard pickup, let's look again, just good cutting, Jackson came in, probably held the middle linebacker, Seaman, just for a fraction, and then he did the rest of it on his own. Oh, there's, there's six missed tackles right there. Count them. Oh, Matt Blair sure missed one. Your point is gaining renewed emphasis, Alex. 88, Alan Page. But Delvin Williams is also a fine runner. Ball at the 17. Jackson. And Jackson is thrown forward by a blitzing number 59, Matt Blair. He gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. In case you just joined us, we have been watching a surprising happening here. The 49ers, their first possession drove the length of the field, went in for the touchdown. They have had 14 rushing plays, and they are threatening once again. They're down at the 15-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. 49ers over the Vikings, 7-0. This is Jackson. Over Jackson, and it gets a little stickier down around the 15-yard line. Jackson squeaks out 
the yard. It'll be third down and seven. Well, it's a little stickier at this particular moment, but still, it's been an amazing turn of events up till now. Resetting the importance of the game for you, or at least for the 49ers. They've got to win tonight, win their next two, and pray that somehow Los Angeles loses its next two to get into the playoffs, a most unlikely possibility. And Scott Ball, the rookie quarterback from Arkansas, has not thrown a pass, and this will be his first. And he completes it to Bobby Williams. And Williams slipped. He tried to lunge forward close to the first down. He's short about, well, about a half a yard, I believe. Jeff Seaman made sure that he did not get up and get it. And it's going to be fourth down. Monty Clark trying to determine whether they should go for the field goal. They better get the points, Frank. Here comes the field goal unit. Steve Mickelmeyer trotting onto the field. Crowd boos. But the coach is doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. Let's get the 10. 20 seconds. Clock ticking away here in the first quarter. 49ers dominating on the ground. A quick look at Monty Clark. His decision. 25-yard field goal attempt. Up. And hits the crossbar. Bounces back into the end zone. No good. That's why coaches hurt. Monty Clark can take that. He did the right thing. He knows it. That's he didn't do the right thing, though, Howard. And he knows. I know he feels bad. He knows it, too. Minnesota, first and 10. Their own 20 yard line. Three seconds remaining in the first quarter, and let's look again. Fans here would boo their mother. Perfect timing. Steve McAmire just off to the right a little bit. This will be the final play of the first quarter. Parkinson. Firing in over the middle, intended for Foreman and batted down. Jimmy Webb, 74, really gave it a rocking with his hands. And that is the end of the first quarter. And it is the 49ers over the Vikings, 7-0. We'll be right back. Oh, man. scoring play by that New York Life Insurance team. Let's see the instant replay. Look at those New York Life pros blocking out Jake's money problems. <laughs> Stopping his retirement worries. And there he is, reaching his goal. Jake's got financial security. New York Life made it happen. Where the name of the game is life, there's New York Life. So much play, so debonair, with a touch of class. Sometimes I think driving a Mercury Monarch is like wearing beautiful clothes. And this is Monarch's label, right engineered by Lincoln Mercury. I feel confident in Monarch, even practical, with a quick, easy shifting of its four-speed overdrive. He has very elegant, the precision size Mercury Monarch. With a touch of class. <laughs> Wide receiver is my primary position. I return kicks in my spare time. That touchdown was a great moment for me. But let me tell you about some great moments that happen daily. Youngsters are working and growing together all across the country in the Girl Scouts. Perhaps your daughter. The Girl Scouts is only one of the thousands of agencies supported by the United Way. Thanks to you, it works. For all of us. The United Way. Right, girls? Right! There's a sign, Rune's Angels, referring to Rune Arledge, president of ABC Sports. Some of the more unknowledgeable minds of the sporting press have actually propagated the notion that we of ABC put up the signs. Would that they knew what they were writing about. Arledge goes from city to city with a valise full of signs, packs them up himself. Second down and 10. Vikings, own 20 yard line. Francis dumps it off again. Ahmad Rashad was in the area and a very canny Francis Tarkenton saw he could not complete it, but he was not going to take the loss. Nor did he want to take the pounding because number 82, Tony Klein, was hot on his heels. Tarkenton now 0 for 5. Coming into tonight, he was passing for just under 63%. Interesting thing about Fran, what a great year. He's over 2,000 yards again this year passing. 
He's done that for 15 consecutive years. As a rookie in 1961, he missed 2,000 yards, would you believe, by three yards. Each game, a passing stop to Canton, Ohio, in the Hall of Fame. Third down and 10. Flag down. And the pass intended for Sammy White, but a flag is down in an area that usually means a holding call, and there it's indicated against the Vikings. It'll be fourth down, and we would anticipate that being declined. The 49ers want the football. Not a bad runner either. <laughs> he has collected some yards running. And you know, he's so smart when he knows he's going to play against a rushing defense, he, he kind of waits for him and goes to the outside and throws the ball. Pretty smart. 36 years old, not Claybo Tarkenton. <laughs> and deep, Tony Leonard. And the 49ers should have excellent field position once again. Claybo hangs it high and hangs it long, and this is Tony Leonard. And Leonard tripped up at the 44-yard line. 47-yard punt, and hustling down there was Doug Damier. We'll be returning to Candlestick Park in just a moment. An independent research company visited hundreds of U.S. homes and asked people to open their cameras. What did they find? More cameras were using EverReady alkaline power cells than any other premium long-life power cell. Remember, for most cameras, you can't buy more reliable long-life photo batteries. Repeat, you can't buy more reliable long-life photo batteries than EverReady alkaline power cells. EverReady wants you to know. Christmas is a time for closeness, and closeness is what Norelco razors are all about. The rotary razors with 36 blades. They come in cord and rechargeable models. They're the razors that cured the gotchas. And the ladybugs, the ladies' razors that really work. And the ladybug salon, a ladybug razor plus 11 grooming attachments. Norelco, even our name says Merry Christmas. Can two football players find love instantly in a ball game? Perhaps. I, I think I love you. No, you don't. You're just stuck in my helmet. No, I don't. I really do love you. <laughs> Tony Leonard returned that punt out to the 44-yard line. First and 10 for the 49ers. They lead the Vikings 7-0. Wilbur Jackson. And Jackson is having some night so far. He got six yards. It'll be second down and four. Paul Krauss made the stop. Alex, that was just a super effort there. That wasn't mixed missed tackles. No, it wasn't. But uh, what's happening right now is they're getting three, four yards at a crack. And what, what Grant will do, he won't take it too much. What he'll do is he'll demand his linebackers to make big plays, knock someone down, start to, you know, make those the front four a little more active. Right now it's second down and four. Jackson now with 58 yards. It was Bobby Bryant who made the stop for Minnesota. And let's look again. Just fine blocking by the offensive line of the 49ers. That time over the left side, Gene Barrett. Now out in front of it is Kenny Harrison, or rather Jim Lash. Three years ago, he was doing this kind of running for Alabama. They're going to follow his blockers, Frank. Oh, he can do it. Over 1,500 yards as a senior down there for the Bear. First and ten, the ball at the 26-yard line. Delvin Williams. And Williams goes down, diving in there and across the block of Keith Farnhorst, his number 81, Carl Eller. You know, there's 101 years of NFL experience on this defensive unit of the Vikings. It's been a whole lot on that front line. All right, Cup, we'll watch maybe. Oh, yeah. All right, here's Carl Eller. Now, he's going to the outside. He's getting a little blocked. And... He's strong, though. I'll tell you that. He can knock someone down with one arm. He does the job that time. 
Two-yard loss, second down and 12. Make it easy on yourself, Carl. Ball at the 28-yard line. Scott Bull, second pass of the night. Wide open, number 87, Jim Lash, the former Minnesota Viking. And he gets down to the 18-yard line. Short of the first down. Jeff Wright took him out of bounds. Five well, minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the first half, and we have seen a lot of offensive show by the 49ers. We told you they lost their last four games, but they didn't lose any of them by only a point or two until last week and when the Rams rolled over them. And up to that point, they had been 6-1, and one, and this was the man who put it together. He brought in 19 new ball players. On third down, ball of the air again. He's going to get creamed. And Mark Mullaney... First draft pick of a year ago, number 77, stormed in out there from the right side. And Bull went down. Ronnie Clark, who believes in a firm foundation. He's got 17 and a half Ds for shoes. That's a good start. And out comes Steve Mickemeyer. He missed a chip shot earlier. Mickemeyer, 12 of 19 on the year. He's had two of them from out around 45 yards and this will be a 45 yard attempt. Scott Bull the holder. Long enough. Straight enough and good enough. Well, Mickemeyer hits from 45 yards out and would you believe the 49ers over the Vikings 10 to nothing. We'll be returning to Candlestick Park and this solemn man in just a moment. Some of the clearest, bluest water in all the world is only one day away on a Boeing jetliner. The Baja, the Caribbean, the South Pacific. Of course, some people have everything right in their own backyard. But if you don't, and warm water is your thing, get hold of your airline and get on a Boeing jetliner. There's a lonely cove somewhere waiting for you. Bank AmeriCard, today's way to pay, presents... Fuel type crescents, roasted pheasants, electric choo-choo trains, fur-lined mittens, fluffy kittens, sweet candy canes, ski lessons, tabonets, bright lighting for the yard, cocktail glasses, airline passes, with Bank AmeriCard, quick healers, three-wheelers, vacations in the sun, sledding, skating, party making, having fun. Bank AmeriCard, Bank AmeriCard, today's way to pay. Saturday, regional coverage of the NCAA Division II Championship Semifinal featuring Montana State against North Dakota State and Northern Michigan against Akron and the Division III Championship between St. John's and Towson State. Then Saturday night, our rivals Arkansas and Texas on ABC. On a cool night here in San Francisco, you're looking at Candlestick Park from the Goodyear Blunt, Columbia, and we... Are looking at a rather surprising score. The 49ers over the Vikings, 10 to nothing. Set to kick off, Steve Mickemeyer, who just hit from 45 yards out. Leonard Willis is on his goal line. Mickemeyer hangs it up, and it'll be Willis from his four. And Willis upended down at the 15-yard line, and hustling down there is Bruce Rhodes, a free agent walk-on this year. So the Vikings, this game being being back to Bloomington. The Vikings have came out here to California on Wednesday. Maybe they had just a little much too sun and a little much too fun. Well, <laughs> sun and fun. Can't beat those two combinations. And this won't last. This man is over six at the moment. First and ten, 15 yard line of the Vikings. Play action. Tarkenton hanging it up for Foreman. Chuck Foreman was battling Mel Phillips down there. Incomplete. That ball really wobbled in the air, Alex. It was a waffler. It was not well thrown. Francis is 0 for 7. Lest you think he has a bad arm, not this year. In his whole career, he had a bad arm one year. You'll remember he went to the prominent relief pitcher, Mike Marshall, who's an expert in that kind of thing. Took the exercises prescribed by Marshall, and the strength came back in the arm. 
And during his career, many of you don't know this, Frank Gifford did the same thing, but the arm never came back. <laughs> Second down and 10, ball at the 15-yard line. Inside handoff, and it goes to McClanahan, and McClanahan goes down. Hustling in there. Number 74, Jimmy Webb. But Grant must be wondering, well, what's happening out there? He's not very happy right now. He knows exactly what's going on. They're really not playing good football. I'll tell you this, Tony Klein has been around the football. He was in on that tackle along with Jimmy Webb. And Al Davis, whom I regard as one of the smartest men ever in football, didn't think Tony could ever play again. After the double knee surgery I referred to earlier. Mormon's in the slot. McClanahan's a setback. Third down at 11. And going up. And Ahmad Rashad made a spectacular catch out of the 47-yard line. His 40th reception of the season. And he's having his best year ever. He really is, and he loves being with the Vikings and with a winning team. In fact, a potentially championship team. And I'll tell you, you don't catch that one easy. That's that his 40th team. of the year. In fact, Tarkenton says, as we look at it again from the blimp, Francis says that this year he's got the best receivers he's ever had without derogating the brilliant John Gilliam, now with Atlanta. But the tandem of Rashad and Sammy White has been exceptional. First and 10, 47 yard line, Foreman right side, gets the midfield, gain of three, it'll be second down and seven. So Tarkenton gets his first completion on a third and 11 situation, and it got the Vikings out of a hole. They were at their own 15 yard line. Well, they have so darn many great leaders on that ball club. Tarkington will bring him out. They got a big situation there. He got him a first down. Maybe that'll pick him right up. That's young Scott Ball right there. Second down, seven. Ball just short of midfield. Tarkington looking for a pass, and he finds Foreman. I think he had the first down and was driven back. Bruce Elia, middle linebacker, along with Jimmy Webb, made the stop. I think we're going to have a measurement. No, we don't need the measurement. He was driven back first and 10 for the Vikings. They're at the 42-yard line of the 49ers, and the Vikings are trailing the 49ers 10 to nothing. Play action again by Tarkenton. Oh, he wants to bomb, and he's going for White. up with Jimmy Johnson and there was a lot of contact but no flags down. There really was, Gip, and Jimmy Johnson did some job staying with the speedy of white. This is the matchup we talked about earlier on that we said we'd be watching closely all night. Here it is. You know, interesting, they play the same position, but Jimmy Johnson and Pat Fisher came up the very same year. There he is. Of course, his brother, you recall the great decathlon champion, Rafer Johnson, of a few years ago has not missed a game in six years. That's a tough spot to play out there. Second down and 10. Ball at the 42-yard line. Bob Grimm is in. Now for the Vikings. Number 26, this is Foreman. And Foreman hustles his way down inside the 38-yard line. It's going to be third down and five. You talk about veterans. Alex talked about this man's strength earlier when with butt and arm he stopped Delvin Williams short of the line of scrimmage. Somehow he goes on from year to year. And there are stories that this Vikings team will one day collapse of age, maybe overnight. But in fact, Bud Grant has carefully worked young people into his lineup so that the average age of the Vikings team is now 27 and a half. Third down, long five, McClanahan's in motion. Tarkenton wants to go on top. And he takes one out there to Foreman. Foreman has the first down. Moving inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Hit there by Willie Harper, number 59. When Tarkenton and Foreman pack it in, Alex, they can run their own vaudeville act. The way he jumps oh, off no. the chuck. The average is 27 years now? Yep, 27 and a half. Young guys must be all 12, 13 years old. Now, come on. Come on. Sammy Johnson checks in, and he's number 48. He came to the Vikings from these 49ers a year ago. But the ball goes to McClanahan, a flag goes down, and so does McClanahan. He was Boy, really nailed. 
And hustling up there to make the stop is number 32, the strong safety. I don't blame him for getting up slow, Frank. He really put the hit on, didn't he? They're really hitting. Alex, to show you how Bud Grant has been infusing his team with young people, he's had 15 new players over the last two years. It is a precept of Joe Thomas, the general manager of the Colts, that to keep a team alive, vigorous, and winning, you must have four to six rookies on your team every year. Bud Grant lives by the same precept. Number 83, first down. Illegal motion against Stu Boyd of the Minnesota Vikings. So it'll be first down again, first down and 15. Sammy Johnson stays in the lineup with Brent McClanahan, Johnson number 48. Going for Bob Grimm. He's in a foot race with Cal Phillips, and they tie down at the goal line. So far, some spectacular coverage back there defensively by Jimmy Johnson and Mel Phillips on a couple of plays. Look at it again. Mel Phillips has <laughs> suffered a broken arm uh, five different times over the past three years. And he talks about his little daughters, Paul Atman, you bet. He says, they think that's part of my football uniform, that cast. <laughs> <laughs> but he is a competitor. Been around 12 years out of North Carolina A&T. Okay, Francis now has a second down at 15. Jack Foreman back in the lineup, number 44. Brent McClanahan, 33. Those are your setbacks. And Foreman scouts under Willie Harper and gets back right about the 30-yard line, just short of the 30-yard line. There's a veteran, too, Howard. One of the oh, most remarkable uh, men in River. the history of the game. <laughs> he holds all the records for consecutive games played. He started his 234th tonight. 222 with Minnesota, the rest with Cleveland. He's as big a man off the field as he has ever been on the field. Chuck Foreman needs 11 yards to crack 1,000 for the season. And on third and 11, Tarkenton goes on the sprint out. And another fine defensive play, but a flag is down. It might have been too fine on Bruce Rhodes. Bruce Rhodes was covering Stu Boyd. And we're going to get an interference call against the 49ers. There's Bruce Rhodes. Had a tryout in San Diego last year. Got cut. And a former great rugby player. Let's look at it again, Giff and Alex. And we remind you of what we said earlier. Nothing new about it for you football watchers. But for those of you not aficionados, on third down, key situations, Francis will inevitably either go to Chuck Foreman or Stu Boyd as tight end whom he considers the most underrated tight end in the business. Robert Miller is in a one setback, number 35, on the first down of the 17, and heading up in it at the line of scrimmage and sprawling for about a yard is Chuck Foreman. It'll be second down and nine. All resting just inside the 16-yard line. Seven minutes and 20 seconds. The clock is counting away here in the second quarter. 12th play of this drive coming up. Bud Grant looking on. He has to like this a little better than what was happening in the opening moments of this game. Nevertheless, the 49ers are out in front of the Vikings, 10 to nothing. On second down, Tarkenton going for point and well, out of bounds. Out of the well, he maybe got a foot out of it. He, it was now Phillips again, all over Stu Boyd. There he is, number 83. 23 receptions coming into tonight. And a flag now being picked up downfield. And this discussion going on with referee Don Wedge at the 15-yard line. So let's listen. Holding defense, number 44. First down. Chris Taylor. Holding for San Francisco, automatic first down. The ball at the 11-yard line. Two big breaks on this drive. Pass interference and that defensive holding. Now we have a referee's timeout. 
Francis goes over to eavesdrop a little bit. Now, whatever problem they had, they clear up. That was Frankie Sinkovitz. Another fine football player. Oh, yeah. Dean Lutt. And our referee's crew tonight. On first and ten, Tarkenton. Francis goes down. Back at the 17-yard line and hustling in there, Jimmy Webb. The second-year man out of Mississippi State. Let's look again. You don't get Fran very often. What a pair of second-year men. Jimmy Webb and Cleveland Elam. They've got... Francis looking downfield for Chuck Foreman, number 44. As you'll see, he was belted there by Mel Phillips, and then Phillips reacting and covering well. Mel Phillips, 12-year veteran, strong safety, having a fine night. Second down, 16. Parkinson again having to throw it away as this time Skip Vanderbilt picked up Chuck Foreman. Another good coverage by the defense of the 49ers. Third down, 16. Ball inside the 18-yard line of the 49ers. Vikings have not been able to get on the scoreboard. Look at those figures. Three out of 13 for Tarkenton. Completely at odds with his whole career history. Even if the Vikes are letting down, Alex, San Francisco is fired up at playing some game. Oh, yeah. Sammy Johnson moves out to the left, out to the right. Ahmad Rashad and Sammy White. The setback is Robert Miller. Hanging it up, Sammy White all alone. Touchdown. And you can hold on to Francis for a while, but don't give him too many opportunities because he'll get you. On the 15th play of that drive, Tarkenton found Sammy White all alone. There had to be a defensive error. Ralph McGill, the free safety, was over there very, very late. And that will produce Fred Cox. Monty Clark. I think he's talking to Ralph McGill. He was. You think he was saying something nice to him, Frank? No. There's Cox. Through the uprights. And the 49ers lead is cut to three. The 49ers over the Vikings, 10 to 7, 6 20 remaining in the second quarter. One Christmas. I'm going to get a Kodak movie camera for me and that son of mine. One Christmas, I'll get a Kodak XL movie camera, the kind that doesn't need movie lights. Or maybe I'll get a new Kodak Sound movie camera, Ektasound, that's what they call it. One Christmas soon, I'm going to get a Kodak movie camera for this grandson of mine, and for me. Don't wait for one Christmas to get a Kodak XL or Ektasound movie camera, because one Christmas may be too late. Service for your car. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you need it, but sometimes you don't. You'd rather just fill up and go. And that's why many Exxon dealers also provide self-service islands, so you can save time and money and still get Exxon quality. Exxon, with self-service for when you don't need help, and full service for when you do. Exxon products Saturday, the Arizona 150 Indianapolis car race featuring the battle for the 1976 USAC Driving Championship between Johnny Rutherford and Gordon Johncock in the final race of the season and the World Professional Skiing Championships Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. 6.22 remaining in the first half from Candlestick Park in San Francisco, Fred Cox kicks away and deep is Kermit Johnson. Paul Hofer and it's a short one and taken at the 27-yard line, returned to the 30-yard line by Dale Mitchell. So the 49ers begin with good field position. Let's look at that touchdown once again. Tarkenton finds Sammy White, who should have been picked up by McGill, Ralph McGill, the free safety, as best we could determine from the comments by Monty Clark, the coach of the 49ers, to McGill when he came off. Let's look at it again. White wide open. He really was a beautiful player, though. First and ten, San Francisco, their own 30-yard line. 
Wilbur Jackson, and a flag goes down as Jackson lunges out to the 42-yard line. Paul Krause there, along with Fred McNeil. And holding is going to be called against San Francisco. Penalties now playing a big part in the game. That's the rookie from Grambling College, Sammy White, who Alex runs beautiful patterns. Yes, for a he rookie. does. He's, you know, everyone knows that outside receivers usually have to be fast or else they just can't catch passes. But he runs to the inside and to the outside very quick. Number 67, first down. John Watson, the center, was holding. First down and 20. Well, Williams moves out of the wing back to the setback position. This is Wilbur Jackson, and Jackson tripped up and lunges forward out to the 23-yard line. Penalties have suddenly become a significant factor in this game. During the Vikings' drive to the touchdown, 14 plays, they went 85 yards. By the way, look at that yardage on Wilbur Jackson. And 18 of those 85 yards came on two penalties. Just now, San Francisco with fairly good field position after taking the kickoff, suddenly found themselves penalized based on that offensive holding call against John Watts. Delvin Williams comes out, a rookie from Mississippi. Paul Hofer comes in, number 36. Scott Ball. Pass intended for Hofer, overthrown. Fred McNeil, number 54, up there threatening for the Vikings. It'll be third down and 17. Don't forget, NCAA football coming up this weekend. Texas at Arkansas, Saturday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time. One of those big rivalries down in the Southwest Conference. And Saturday, two Division two championship playoff semifinals. Northern Michigan against Akron. Montana State against North Dakota State. And also, Division Three, a championship final, Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, St. John's against Towson State. That's Saturday, NCAA College Football. Third down, 17. Scott Bowl, a lot of time, no receivers. And he's in the arms of Alan Page. And that's not a good place for a quarterback to be. Well, that's unfortunately what happens to a young quarterback. He got back there, no one was covered. And, and you know, usually when a veteran sees that, he'll throw to the outside, probably way over the line of scrimmage and out of the way of anyone. Of course, he doesn't know better yet. He, he'll learn, I think, as he gets a little older. Right now, he's going to take his, his lumps. That uh, brings on fourth down. It brings out Tom Whittem. This is the first punt for the 49ers. Deep Leonard Willis, number 80, a fourth-round draft pick out of Ohio State, who runs 109-3. Whittem. This will offer an opportunity for a return to Willis. And he gets out to the 45, tripped up. And Minnesota was starting in good field position. As Tom Whittem is upset about something. From RCA, an advancement in remote control television, a color track control center. In an eighth of a second, it switches from one channel to any other directly without clicking through the channels in between. It shows time and channel with each change. It controls volume, color, tint. It puts so much control in your hands, the knobs have been taken off the set. The Color Track Control Center. Another way, RCA is making television better and better. The Alaskan Pipeline. 800 of the toughest miles man has ever conquered. And up here, quitting time is Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer, Miller Beers. Miller Bar! Miller Bar! We've got the beer. Jake Stabler of the Oakland Raiders is a pinpoint passer. And of course, there is the man with the best hands in football, Fred Boletnikoff, number 25. They spark the Oakland Raiders, who face a big one next Monday night against the Cincinnati Bengals. It's even bigger for Cincinnati. Should they lose and Pittsburgh win its remaining games, the Steelers will be back in the playoffs. 
We look forward to having you with us next Monday night. Oakland against Cincinnati. First and 10 for the Vikings, 45-yard line. They trail the San Francisco 49ers, 10 to 7. This is Chuck Foreman. And Foreman hustles out over midfield, gets seven. It'll be second down and three. Good individual effort. Skip Vanderbilt in there to make the stop. And there is a fine receiver, Gene Washington. Fine young man, too. That motion man there is Robert Miller. Had a big game against Green Bay a week ago, and here comes Foreman, spinning and twisting around. Vanderbilt on the bottom. He needs four more yards, Chuck Foreman, for a thousand on the air. Here he comes. goes down as Foreman got up close to the 45-yard line. Bruce Elia was there and Dave Washington. All being marked at Foreman's progress, having stopped at the 46-yard line, but a penalty on the play. out there talking to the defensive lineman he's against tonight. He said, guys, just slow down a little bit. Man, I'm 38 years old. You know what I mean? Robert, Robert Miller was holding number 35. He's that second-year man out of Kansas. You just gave him two more years. <laughs> Robert Jackson, what a night he's having. 85 yards. Four minutes remaining in the first half. Second down and 12. Rashad. And Rashad is down around the 11 yard line as Fran hangs it up. Another brilliant catch by Ahmad Rashad. Mel Phillips back there trying to defend along with Bruce Taylor. They've been not got the jump, and that was it. You know, you look at a guy like Bruce Taylor. Remember his rookie year when he came up from Boston University, Frank? Scintillating kick runner, brilliant on defense. Then he went into a slump. It's been felt that he's been getting back his old form over the past two years, but that time. Francis worked him over. A brilliant throw, a brilliant catch. Let's look at it again. You see number 32, Mel Phillips, the strong safety. He got over there, but the man that Ahmad Rashad beat was Bruce Taylor. And targeted right on target. 47-yard completion. First and 10, the ball at the 11-yard line. Three minutes remaining in the half, and this is Chuck Foreman, and that should put him over 1,000 yards. Foreman gets three on that. It'll be second down and seven. A troubled money clock shouting instructions out to his team. He doesn't have to apologize for anything. Not this year. They haven't taken off on him in this town. In fact, quite the converse. They've been great to him. And the press has taken to him because he doesn't make any excuses. 229. Second down and seven. Washington lays it up for the shot. Touchdown. And it's that easy when the man gets hot. And Tarkenton has found a very favorite receiver in Ahmad Rashad. Especially against Bruce Taylor. There he is. Third reception of the night. He is 42nd on the year. That's more than he has ever had in a given season. Three receptions, 88 yards. Fred Cox is on for the conversion. Blocked. Oh, and we have seen more of that this year than I can remember. Look at it again. See if we can pick up who gets his hand on it. I think 72, Cleveland Elam. Cleveland Elam. Take Let's a look at Rashad against Bruce Taylor again, Howard. Right. All right, as we look at it in slow motion, watch Rashad. He moves out, slows down, but he's already got Bruce Taylor beaten, and the ball is laid in there so softly. <laughs> it was so, laid in there beautifully. So perfect. Oh. 
that bump and run or man to man you get one bump and you're supposed to uh, when the receiver looks back to the quarterback you're supposed to look back you saw Bruce Taylor looking back he looked over the wrong shoulder it wouldn't have mattered anyway because that ball was perfectly thrown as my man Cleveland Elam blocked the extra point seems to live with the opposition quarterback Fred Cox to kick off Kermit Johnson is deep along with Paul Hoper and again kicked along the ground and bobbled there at the 22 yard line and then recovery made by Dale Mitchell so Dale Mitchell has handled two kickoffs tonight that's a new job for Dale Mitchell because he was the final strikeout victim of Don Larson in October 1956 as Lawson shut out the then Brooklyn Dodgers with his perfect game. Those were the days, my friend. And kept us out of Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> San Francisco, first and ten. We're heading towards the two-minute warning, 2.12 on the clock to be exact. And the Vikings have roared back, but they have put themselves in a bit of a problem with a block conversion. They lead the 49ers 13 to 10. And one point they trail 10 to nothing. Delvin Williams back in the lineup and gets the call and finds a big hole. Oh, look at Delvin Williams explode and he's out over to the 40 yard line. And when Delvin Williams turns it on, he can roar. That's a 23 yard pickup. And there is the two minutes indicated on the clock. So Delvin Williams have, has given the 49ers something to work with in the final two minutes of the first half. And we'll be returning to Candlestick Park in just a moment. Shouldering America's energy needs is a job Exxon's been helping to do for years. It's a job that takes experience, technical know-how, financial stability, and every bit of management capability that Exxon can provide. So Exxon has put all of these strengths and capabilities together to bring oil, gas, and other energy directly to you. Energy for a strong America. Capri is on the prowl. Let cat black. Flashes of gold on sleek, sinewy black. Ghost cat, fleet and white, streaked with gold. Devil cat, sleek and mean. Steel cat, glinting, gleaming. Shut the cat. You can try to resist, but Capri has captured you. Capri 2, sexiest Capri ever. Imported for Lincoln Mercury. Usually what happens is a center like John Watson, 67, will come out for Jeff Seaman, but this time he crisscrosses with, criss with his uh, left guard, Steve Lawson, and Lawson does a good job, opens a big hole, and, and shades of Joe Perry, Howard. Delvin Williams. 859 yards coming into tonight's game for Delvin Williams, third-year man out of Kansas. He can bust Joe Perry's all-time SF rushing record. He has 73 tonight. First and ten. Ball at the 40-yard line of the 49ers. Play action. Scott Bull. Back looking and yes. Gene Washington. And how many times if you follow this game and you watch Gene Washington hang on the sidelines, keep both feet in and get the first down. Young Bull really rifle that ball, Frank. Got a strong arm. And a very gifted athlete. He played just about every position they had at the University of Arkansas one time or another. Well, young Bull has a real whip, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll let it lay there. Oh. <laughs> I didn't say anything else. First and ten. Ball at the 44-yard line. 155. Heading in the first half and lunging forward is Wilbur Jackson and... No, that was late. It's been blown dead. 39-yard line. It's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Don't forget, folks, next Monday night, Cincinnati comes to the Great Bay Area. They'll be in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum going against the Oakland Raiders with the best record in football. Oakland has already clinched in its division. They're at 11-1. But Cincinnati has to beat Oakland to be assured of getting into the playoffs. Should they lose, should the Steelers win their remaining two games, the Steelers, the hottest team in football now, winners of the last two Super Bowls, are still very much alive, playing at their peak, coming off their 7-3 victory over Cincinnati yesterday in that blizzard in the great Rhineland city. So, 
There's Bruce Ealy. We told you earlier on, he was a rookie with the Dolphins a year ago, went the expansion draft to Tampa, then came over to San Francisco. A fine young player. But at that time, and beginning this year with a brilliant pair of draft choices, Larry Gordon and Bo Camper from Sam, San Jose State, Shula felt he could dispose of Ilya. Then, beset by all the injuries and the departure of Doug Swift, Shula was bereft of linebackers and had to call Bonacani back into service. Well, the guy was happy as Monty Clark. He's got Ilya. Anything else? Nope. <laughs> Just fill them in. Just fill them in on what the story is. Tell it like it is. Yeah, those are right kind of people up there in old Napa Wine Valley country. I'll, I'll tell you that. All right, Howard. All right, 140 remaining in the first half, second down and six. The ball at the 39-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. They beat the 49ers 13 to 10. And Melvin Williams finds another big hole. He's inside the 30 to the 29, stopped there by Jeff Wright. And we got an idea why Jeff Delvin Williams had such a fine record coming into tonight's play, and young Scott Bull wants another time out there down to one. 83 yards gained, and Delvin Williams is getting some big holes to run through tonight. Seaman took himself out of it. Yeah, that's the blitz. exactly what happened. Krause missed the tackle. He usually does that. That's why he's been around 17 years. Jeff Wright makes the collection at the 39 yard, 29 yard line. Seaman doesn't miss these tackles very often, but he just took himself out of the blitz. John Watson, the center, got a hold of him. Good block on Fred McNeil by Gene Barrett. Missed tackle by Krause. And a first down for the 49ers at the 29-yard line of the Vikings. 126 remaining in the first half. Grand target. Victimized in New York. Some said he wasn't a winner. He's proved to be nothing but a winner. We've told you about him through all of the years. He's always given us a great show on Monday Night Football. Started slowly tonight, then came alive. The touchdown pass to Sammy White, and then that beautiful softly thrown thing to Ahmad Rasha. Only six out of 16, but there when most needed. Another interesting happening that is about to take place here at Candlestick Park. Delvin Williams now needs 58 yards for his 1,000 for the season. That seemingly has become a mark for all running backs. Chuck Foreman needs one yard for 1,000. And right now, the 49ers have a first and 10, the 29-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. They have one timeout remaining. There's 126 remaining in the first half. Scott Ball. Out of time, going for Washington. Flag goes down against Nate Wright. He was covering Gene Washington, and a flag went down. The ball was thrown out of bounds. Let's take a look. You'll see number 43 come into your picture. There he is. That's Nate Wright. And what do you think? Right on that one. I thought it was a gutsy call, and I thought it was a proper call. What would you think? Well, I thought I thought the other man bumped. I thought Washington bumped. 49ers at the one-yard line on the pass interference against Nate Wright. 28-yard penalty in effect. get in. Carl Eller, Jeff Seaman, Wally Hilgenberg, all meeting Wilbur Jackson right at the goal line. Inside one minute, seconds ticking away. That's no major problem. All right, it's not at the moment. The 49ers have one timeout remaining. We got some football game. We really do. 
fans here going wild. Well, they probably will go wild. They've dropped four straight after being the surprise of the year early in the season with a 6-1 record. Steve Mickemeyer for the conversion. Scott Bull is holding. Minnesota Vikings, 17 to 13. 41 seconds remaining in the first half. And so that blocked con uh, conversion attempt on Minnesota by San Francisco now looms as possibly very, very important than a field goal. Let's take a look at it again. Scott Bull, we told you early on that he was a big boy. 6'5", 215 pounder. And he just surges forward behind the center, John Watson. Has to be a happy youngster. Steve Mickemeyer will kick off. Leonard Willis, single safety at the goal line. I don't think he'll see it. He will see it. He has the speed. Up to the 23-yard line. 36 seconds remaining on the clock. Here in the first half, the Vikings with three timeouts. Interesting halftime show coming up. The youngsters from the punt, pass, and kick group. Of course, some wild play yesterday around the league. Cleveland and Miami, what a game that was. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, we've already talked about that. The Steelers over Cincinnati, 7-3 setting up a wild run for that Central Division title. We'll be involved in that next Monday night Cincinnati against Oakland. First down, screen pass to Foreman. And Foreman out to the 30-yard line, hit there by Dave Washington. Gain of seven, it'll be second down and three. Carkenton uses one of his times out, and he walks over to confer with head coach Bud Grant. And Saturday night, NCAA college football. It'll be Arkansas at Texas. And they always get it on. That's at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Heading back to that Central Division race in the American Conference. Cincinnati, of course, 9-3. and three. They will be out here against Oakland next Monday night. Then their final game is against the Jets. The Steelers have Tampa at home, then they have Houston. Do we have that game, the Jet game? No, we don't have that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland, of course, still in there mathematically. They're eight and four. They have Houston at home. And then they play at Kansas City, their final two games. Very quietly, that team has been so turned around, that Cleveland team. Boris Brian Seip came in and did the job for Boris Gregg, as you say. Greg Pruitt, as exciting a player probably as there is in football. Second down and three. The ball at the 30-yard line. 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Parkinson unloads it. And catching the ball is Stu Boyd right about the line of scrimmage. Did you see Talk's reaction as he looked left and suddenly saw 72 Elam and 74 Webb, Alex? Well, he knows he knows he's going to get the pressure from that front four, and he's very alert to the outside, and that's exactly where he'll run. Lost about a half a yard on that play. He hasn't lost any of his moves, has he? My goodness, he's, what, are, what is he, 36 now? 36 years old. Has the same quickness of feet that was the earmark of your play, Alex. That's right, only I was a little heavier. <laughs> we did a little math, as we said at the beginning of the show. He has passed for, well, almost 23 and a half miles since he came into pro football. That's down the road a piece. Break that up in meters, boy. Vikings have one timeout remaining. Third down, four. And over the middle is Robert Miller. He has, well, he's close to the first down. Again, I think he does have it. And Robert Miller upset. Willie Harper in there to nail Miller. Harkinson's trying to get the action moving. Six seconds now on the clock. 
And Tarkin just mad in the sense that he wanted to get another playoff to kill the clock and conserve that one timeout. And he's had to use it. I think Jock looked for a delay a game call on San Francisco because they got up so slowly, Frank. Your view? Well, they are allowed a little bit of time to regroup. But that's exactly what he was griping about. Of course, the 49ers are watching that clock also. Vikings have no more. Time's out. Six seconds on the clock. Do you believe he's going to hang it up high, or will he go to Foreman and let him run? I think they had a flea flicker plan. He was going to go to Rashad, and he was going to lateral back to Foreman. That did not eventuate. Another word in my vocabulary, Howard. Three seconds. That flea flicker has come into vogue again this season. Oklahoma used it effectively against Nebraska, you'll remember, Gip. Why do they call it a flea fl flicker? It's kind of a tongue twister anyways. <laughs> SMU, I think, started it. That's the first time I ever heard of it. They were called the SMU flea flicker. Parkinson, that's his first incomplete pass after going six straight. And he started off the game 0 for 7. One second down. This will be the final play. Over the middle, through Boyd, and Boyd nailed at the 45-yard line by Dale Mitchell, but time has expired in the first half. And stay with us. Highlights coming up, punt pass and kick. Right now, the 49ers over Minnesota, 17-13. International Falls, Minnesota. A car sits on a frozen lake. Through January, February, and March. Then, in April, it started. Thanks to a diehard. The diehard sold only at Sears. Playing a little handball. Now there's more to Sears telegames than just Pong. Hey, Gramps, you want to play some catch? Okay. Now Sears has a whole line of telegames. Hey, Gramps, can I play? Sure. Let's play Super Pong doubles. And some telegames have remote controls, so up to four people can play a whole variety of games. Hey, that a boy, Scooter, you got it, you got it? Telegames, electronic games, sold only at Sears. It's me and Billy. Next on Rich Man, Poor Man, book two. I was going to say we made love, but love had nothing to do with it. Wes learns the truth about Billy. Please listen! And a family feud begins as Rich Man, Poor Man continues. Tomorrow at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. We're back live, Candlestick Park, San Francisco. Highly interesting ball game. San Francisco surprisingly lead, leading at halftime, 17 to 13 over the Vikes. Quickly, let's recap the scoring. San Francisco moved downfield on the ground in the first quarter. Jackson went in on a two-yard run, seven to nothing, the 49ers. Then, a field goal by Mickey Mayer made it 10 to nothing, that in the second quarter. And then, Fran Tarkenton went to work. He hit the dazzling rookie from Grambling, Sammy White, number 85, as you see it here. White, unaccountably, all alone. And that made it 10 to 7. And then, as they began to move again, the Vikings, it was Fran Tarkenton with the pass you're about to see to Ahmad Rashad, as Rashad, for the second time consecutively, beat Bruce Taylor, number 44. Watch it here now. He has passed him is alone and the ball floats so softly so beautifully in but the extra point attempt was blocked so the bikes led 13 to 10. the 49ers came back with the aid of a pass interference penalty that went down on the one yard line the 
The 49 is scored. Conversion good. 17 to 13. Now it's time to take a look at our punt, pass, and kick competition. And who better to take over at this point and describe it to you than Frank Gifford. In a moment, we're going to see some youngsters who may be the pro players of tomorrow. But first, let's take a look at how these youngsters are getting their start. Punt, pass, and kick is a very popular and successful youth activity. Each year, for the past nine years, over a million youngsters have signed up and participated in PPNK. And in 15 years since the beginning of PPNK, the total number of participants has topped 13 million. PPNK is sponsored by the Ford Dealers of America in cooperation with the National Football League. To register, youngsters simply go into a local Ford dealer with their mom or dad and sign up. There are many good reasons why punt, pass, and kick has been so successful. The biggest being that PPNK gives youngsters a chance to have fun and to test their football skills against others their own age. And as youngsters progress through the different levels of competition, they win handsome trophies. And they have the opportunities to travel and to meet the real pro players. The final winners become punt, pass, and kick national champions in their respective age groups. And they have their names placed in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. These youngsters on the 15-yard line have already competed in punting and kicking events. Now they'll compete to see who can throw the farthest and most accurately. Their scores will be totaled, and we'll see the winners later. And now if the officials are ready, let's go to the action down on the field. And our first eight-year-old passer is number 62. That's Robert Mbanati. He's from Pahua, Hawaii. Nice toss, Bob. Now number 65 is Bradley Hunter, North Bend, Oregon. Nice pass, Brad. 25 yards. Now the nine-year-olds. Number 61 is Robin Mahialeni Gomes of Pahala, Hawaii. A 23-yarder for Robin. And now here's Keith Turner, number 12, out of Salinas, California. Let her fly, Keith. That's a beauty, Keith. 25 yards. Now our 10-year-olds, Lane Santiago, number 18, Paula, Hawaii. toss lane 36 yards and now number 14 John Simerson San Rafael California good toss 31 yards and now the 11 year olds this is number 20 Alan Davis from County Oe Hawaii Not bad, Alan. 24-yarder, and now here's Aaron Paulson wearing number 15 from Grover City, California. Nice toss, Aaron. Out there, 29 yards. And now moving to the 12-year-olds, Ms. Cynthia Stehauer from Honolulu, Hawaii, number 21. Beauty. Nice toss, Cynthia. 33 yards. Now number 19 is Peter Incavilla, Monterey, California. That is a beauty, Peter. Right on the line and a 39-yarder to boot. Now our 13-year-olds, number 68. Louis K. Ala from Haula, Hawaii. Wow! Out of the bar park, Louis. 50 yards for Louis. Now, number 72 is Mike Mancini from Redwood City, California. A good toss by Mike Mancini. 44 yards. And there you are, ladies and gentlemen. The officials will add up the points, double-check measurements, and determine the 
six San Francisco area com competition winners. And we'll announce their names at the end of the third quarter. Right now, let's give all these youngsters an encouraging round of applause. time in San Francisco San Francisco over Minnesota 17 to 13 and now as our custom halftime highlights beginning with Cleveland and Miami that's far as Greg the head coach of the Cleveland Browns they've got to face the always tough Miami Dolphins it's Paul Warfield's birthday 34 years of age and this is quarterback Brian Seip action early in the second quarter the score nothing nothing to Paul Warfield, and he's got a birthday present. 13 yards. Touchdown. The Browns take a 7 to nothing lead. But Miami, as you all know, never quits. And Benny Malone, the quick-starting breakaway runner of the Dolphins, moves down the left sideline, wearing a breakaway helmet, if you will, before he's finally stopped. Good game. With 40 seconds left in the half, Bob Greasy, the polished veteran quarterback, hit number 20, Larry Seifel, touchdown. The game becomes 7-6 to six because they missed the conversion as they did against Baltimore. Brian Seif hitting Richie Rucker, touchdown. That made it 14-6. to six. The figures you saw in Brian Seif reflective of the way he's been quarterback in Cleveland all season long ever since he took over from Mike Phipps but Greasy is always there 22 of 33 on the day for him and here he hits Benny Malone Benny moving again down to his left along the sideline and finally being brought down 36 yard game what a surprise team Cleveland has been this year they've won seven in a row they're at eight and four on the year with the victory achieved in this game right there Greasy hits Freddie Solomon that's a touchdown that made it 14 to 13 but with 10 minutes left in the game watch this the punt by Cleveland playing in flurries of snow the ball taken by Freddie Solomon out of town, second year man, injured the first half of this year. Brilliant, predicted for him. Look at him go! Now he's got it. He bears left over toward the sideline, out races the puncher, and moves on in for a parent touchdown. But nullified, nullified by a penalty, Cleveland went on to win 17 to 13. At San Diego State, the Chiefs against the San Diego Chargers. And this is Dan Fouts. The four minutes into the first quarter. Quick throw to Don Woods. Touchdown. The Chargers lead seven to nothing. Then with 6.30 left in the quarter. The quick handoff to Ed Podol. Back in good health. He sweeps right. Goes in for the score. That made it seven to seven. Then in the fourth quarter. With Kansas City leading San Diego 16 to 13. Fouts goes to work again. Hits number 18, Charlie Joyner, who is having a superb year, as the graphic there shows. So San Diego moved out ahead all over again, 20 to 16. But Ed Podolak moving up the middle for a touchdown, and so Kansas City roars from behind to achieve a victory, 23 to 20. We're back live at Candlestick Park. They've got fireworks here. Right now, they're doing a very nice thing. They're paying a tribute to ABC Sports. And you see the fireworks about to be set off again, I suspect. But thank you very much, you people of San Francisco and the 49ers, our host tonight, for recognition of our Olympic coverage. Network of the Olympics. That's ABC. Right now, let's go to our play of the week. No, we'll be back in just a moment, and then the play of the book. I'm going to ride in this cable car, suspended by cable made from flexed end tire cord, over Royal Gorge. Tire cord is the main reinforcing agent in a tire. Tensile strength is only one of many performance properties in a tire, but it's one of the most important. Flex 10, a Goodyear exclusive, was developed from a man-made aramid fiber that is pound for pound stronger than steel. 
Flex 10, the tire court of the future from Goodyear. Haruki Fujimoto, a kabuki dancer. He eats a traditional Japanese diet. Increasingly, doctors see two advantages to his diet. More fiber, fewer calories. New Fresh Horizons bread has the same advantages. ITT makes Fresh Horizons with fewer calories than regular white bread. As much fiber as 100% brand cereal. ITT thinks your diet should be as good as his. Denver at New England, both teams with playoff hopes. The Patriots playing as good football as anybody in the league. Look at this, Steve Ramsey back to pass. Sacked by number 78, Tony McGee. Ramsey again back to pass. Sacked again by 78, Tony McGee. Ramsey back to pass. Sacked again, this time by Ray Hamilton, 71. Nine times on the day, Ramsey was sacked. Here, throwing for Jack Dalvin, he's intercepted by the brilliant first-round draft choice, Mike Haynes, rookie defensive back, and how he can go. That was his seventh intercept on the year. Now, a punt, and watch Mike Haynes on this one. Number 40, Patriots hadn't had a kick return for a touchdown in years. This year, Mike Haynes has already done it twice. Now he does it for 62 yards and a touchdown. That made the score 24 to nothing. New England over Denver. But it wasn't just kick running or pass. Right here, Don Calhoun, the backup man for the injured Sam Van Cunningham with a good run. And look at the day he had, 177 yards. So the Patriots have it all this year. The depth, the defense, the offense. Everything, or so it seems. Forte going in for the last touchdown for New England as the Patriots zoom to a 38-14 victory over Denver that killed off Denver. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati in a blizzard, the key game of the day. The Steelers struggling to keep their playoff hopes alive. The Bengals leading in the central division of the NFC. This is third quarter action. And Franco with a good day considering the weather. Pours through for four yards. Touchdown. The Steelers took a 7-3 to three lead. It was impossible weather to play in or so it seemed. And yet there was a good share of fine plays like here. Crusett of Boston College substituted for the injured Bradshaw. Hits Lynn Swan. Look at Lynn go. That's good for 51 yards, down to the 11-yard line. And the Steelers threatening again. But the Bengals held. And the Bengals have a way of coming back. Look at the veteran center, Ray Mansfield, liking the taste of the snow. Watch Anderson try to bring them back now. He throws from his own end zone. He does it so often. He'll throw from anywhere. This one for 54 yards. Perfect pass to his favorite target, Isaac Curtis. Isaac went out of bounds. The Steelers then held the Bengals. Chuck Noll obviously worried. Why not? The Bengals, a team with enormous comeback capacity. Right here, perfect pitch to Chip Myers, but a great play by J.T. Thomas at the last moment. And so, finally, the game ends. Franco Harris and the Steelers win it 7-3. to three. And now it's time for our play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by Muriel Cigars. Where there's Muriel smoke, believe me, there is indeed fire. Here we go. The plays of the week and the player of the week, O.J. Simpson, 32, Buffalo Bills. And it's one losing effort against the Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day pass. This run, typical of the juice all day long. Picking up good yardage before finally going down. Now watch this one. The quick burst through the hole. And then the quick cut to the left. Watch the way he uses that downfield blocker. And he's in for the touchdown, 48 yards. On the day, 29 rushes, 273 yards. New NFL record, breaking an old one by Jimmy Brown. What a performer he was. This run, good for 12 yards, touchdown. The player of the week, O.J. Simpson. Muriel, turn you on. That is 
Super first half here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, and it's the 49ers out over the Minnesota Vikings 17 to 13. ABC's Monday Night Football, the Vikings versus the 49ers, is being brought to you by Lincoln Mercury, who invites you to inspect one of America's outstanding collections of fine cars now at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. And we'll be ready for the second half kickoff after this message and a word from our local stations. Due to mature subject matter, parental discretion is advised. Unless I miss my guess, Captain, you're out of uniform. Alan Arkin. Take him out and shoot him. Richard Benjamin. Martin Balsam. Bob Newhart. And Orson Welles. Catch 22. Sunday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Gift. Remember when we auditioned Karras for Monday Night Football? We had him do it in a tutu. He's got better wheels than Namath. <laughs> what did old babe Dick Dietrichson say? It beats beating hash. <laughs> All right, we are about ready for the kickoff. It'll be the Vikings kicking off to the 49ers. A good football game if you've been watching. Those are the stats. Along with that, an interesting thing is going to happen here. Well, it could happen for Delvin Williams. He needs 58 yards for the 49ers to go for 1,000 yards for the season. Chuck Foreman only needs one yard unofficially to get his thousand. Here's Fred Cox setting it up. Minnesota, of course, have clinched their division, the Central Division of the National Conference, but they're playing for that home crowd, home field advantage. There is Kermit Johnson dropping back, number 47. He's back there with Paul Hofer, and that is not Kermit. That's, he's got a new look if it is. Part of a very festive evening here tonight in San Francisco. And the second half is underway. Low kick by Cox. And it bounds into the arms of Hofer. And Hofer is nailed out of the 26-yard line. So the 49ers will get the first possession. They lead the Minnesota Vikings 17 to 13. The Vikings all but dead. They have a mathematical shot. They would have to win the rest of their games while the Los Angeles Rams would have to lose their remaining games. First and 10 for the 49ers. Ball at the 27-yard line. The quarterback is Scott Bull. Jim Plunkett has been on the bench. He has a full muscle in his side. And this is Delvin Williams. And Williams gets five yards out to the 32, and let's meet the offensive unit of the 49ers. Scott Bull, quarterback, Fable in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Devin Williams, running back, fifth floor, Texas, Houston, Texas. Wilbur Jackson, fullback, Ozark, Alabama. Gene Washington, wide receiver, Long Beach, California. S, wide receiver, Akron, Ohio. That's your old tight end, Plymouth White Marsh, Pennsylvania. And on the field, second down and five. This is Delvin Williams, and Delvin Williams is nailed by number 50, Jeff Seaman. Uh, middle linebacker who played his collegiate football just down the road of these Palo Alto at Stanford University. There's Chuck Foreman, a yard away from 1,000 yards for the season. Let's take a look at Jeff Seaman. He's one of the fine middle linebackers in pro football today. 6'3", 230-pounder. Now we won't see him this time. Third down and six. This is Scott Bull, and Paul Krause intercepts, and it was intended for Delvin Williams. That is Paul Krause's 76th interception of his career. He is three away from tying the late Emlyn Tunnell's all-time record, a record set that has been thought absolutely unbeatable. And both former University of Iowa football players. That's I true. just thought I'd tell you guys that. And the touch of Razzle Dazzle, which we're seeing a lot more of this year with the lateral pass. Krause was able to get up and run because nobody had touched him. There was the lateral. And the first turnover of the ball game. Handoff, Chuck Foreman. And Foreman has his thousand. 
as he gets three. It'll be second down and seven. Bruce Ilya. So Chuck Foreman has gone over the thousand yard mark for the second time. Second consecutive time. Last year, he had 1,070. That's a Minnesota Viking rushing record, and he has two games to erase his own rushing record for Minnesota. Could do it tonight. Bruce Ilya was shaken up, got up, went back to the huddle, and decided he could not continue. So that will bring on Frank Nunley, and Nunley will be playing with a fractured cheekbone. And we'll be returning to Candlestick Park in just a moment. This is the mark of the cat. New symbol of driving excitement for the cat sets. Mercury Cougar XR7. A total new look for 77. Bold, strong, aggressive. More of a cougar than we've ever unleashed before. Deeply padded, richly luxurious. With a stance on the road that says, this is my private domain. And now XR7 unleashes more excitement. A pack of new Cougar running mates. An elegant four-door brome. Handsome, spacious, with a luxury ride engineered by Lincoln Mercury. More excitement in two-door hardtops. And a sporty Cougar wagon with rich wood tone paneling. Fresh from the lair and yards of cargo space. New luxury, new action for the cat set. See all the new Cougars for 77. At the sign of the cat. Saturday, regional coverage of the NCAA Division II Championship Semifinals featuring Montana State against North Dakota State and Northern Michigan against Akron and the Division III Championship between St. John's and Towson State. Then Saturday night, our tribals Arkansas and Texas on ABC. Head coach Bud Grant of the Minnesota Vikings on the sidelines. Eight divisional titles over the past nine years. Remarkable coaching record. Out on the field, his Vikings have a second down and seven. Chuck Foreman, who just went over 1,000 yards, almost broke this one off. He gets down to the 15-yard line. It'll be a yard short of a first down and third down. Ralph McGill up there to make the stop, and Bruce Ilya is being attended to on the 49er bench. And you hate to see them start wiggling that knee. This is the way they check to see if the ligaments have been loosened. Vikings trailing the 49ers, 17 to 13. They have a third and one at the 15-yard line of the 49ers. That's Bob Grimm in motion. Flag is down. Somebody was moving illegally. Steve Riley, I believe, over the left side. It looked as he made him. Let's have a look at the offensive faces. Francis Asbury Tarkin, the quarterback from Athens, Georgia. Chuck Foreman, I'm a running back, and uh, I'm from Frederick, Maryland. Brent McClanahan, running back, Bakersfield, California. Send your wife, wide receiver, Monday and Luda. I think you should, wide receiver, Tacoma, Washington. Stu Boyd, tight end, Madison, Wisconsin. Third down and six, targets in play action. Over the middle, looking for Bob Grimm, and off his fingertips, hustling back there, Mel Phillips for the 49ers. It'll be fourth down, and that should produce Brett Cox. Interesting to see Tarkenton throwing to Bob Grimm. Remember, Bob Grimm came to the Giants in the trade for Tarkenton, Frank. Then Giants unloaded him and so on. It looked like his career was over. But Bud Grant has a habit of going back to old players of his whom he believed in, and he still believed in Bob Grimm. So Bob is back with the Vikes, and Grant throwing to Bob. Actually, he was cut by the Bears last year. 37-yard field goal, Cox. And it's good. And the Vikings bring it close. They trail by one. We're in the third quarter, and we have a whale of a football game. If you just happen to have joined us, it looked like a 49er runaway in the opening moments. At one point, they led 10 to nothing. Tarkenton got hot, connected with a... Rashad a couple of times, got him out of trouble. Then he hit Sammy White. Then they punched it in for the one-yard line. And right now, San Francisco has a one-point lead. 
And we got a report about Bruce Elia, Frank. It is a strain to right knee. Whether or not he'll see any more action tonight, undetermined. While awaiting the kickoff, some quick news today. For the first time in 25 years in the National League, co-rookies of the year name, pitcher Butch Metzka, the fine reliever with the San Diego Padres, and Pat Zachary, who did so well for the Cincinnati Reds and did so well in the World Series, too. You had a look at Johnson and Hofer. A low kick again by Fred Cox. And this is Kermit Johnson. Kermit Johnson runs it back the way it should be run back, and he's out to the 35-yard line, hit there by Leonard Willis. What a tough year for Larry Zonka, fellas. He's out for the year. He will undergo knee surgery tomorrow. That's another news report, ABC Sports. First and 10 now. 49ers at their own 35-yard line. We're in the third quarter with 12 minutes, three seconds remaining here in the third. Jackson, who had a tremendous first half, picks up where he left off. He gets nine. It'll be second down and one. Let's pause right now five seconds and allow our local stations all along the line to identify themselves. Back at Candlestick Park, Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. Watching a very young 49er team, a team that's vastly different since Monty Clark came in a year ago. He's brought in 19 new players, 11 of them rookies. Second, less than a yard to go at the 45-yard line. Jackson, the call, the first down, up close to midfield. And let's meet the Minnesota Vikings defensive front four. Long in the tooth, but they're good. Western Salem, North Carolina. Doug Sutherland, defensive tackle, Superior, Wisconsin. Alan Page, defensive tackle, Canton, Ohio. Jim Marshall, defensive end, Columbus, Ohio. Jim Marshall, who made his 234th consecutive start tonight. First of 10, 49ers, just inside their own 50-yard line. Delvin Williams. Cutting back and getting inside the 45 of the Vikings. Paul Krause upends Williams. They get six, maybe seven. Call it second down, a long three. Last year, Williams had 631 yards. Former second round draft pick. 74 and he broke his wrist as a rookie and they did not anticipate he was going to become the runner that he had. On second down, Jackson with a good move gets the first down. Went for the hole, it was closed, moved to the outside, gets the first at the 37-yard line. Wilbur Jackson having a big night tonight. Another Jackson had a big day today. Reggie Jackson. They made it official in New York, though it amounted to old news by now. Reggie Jackson has signed a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract with the New York Yankees. Wilbur Jackson hopes it will happen with him someday. 49ers opening up as they did in the first quarter on the ground and doing well by it. No Williams. Just a couple of yards. All right, let's meet the linebackers for the Minnesota Vikings. A rowdy bunch. Matt Blair, linebacker, Dayton, Ohio. Jeff Seaman, middle linebacker, Bakersfield, California. Wally Hilgenberg, right linebacker from the friendly city of Wilton Junction, Iowa. I must point out that two of these players tonight, where the Vikings are from Bakersfield, California, just down the road apiece. Second down and nine. And it's Jackson again, and this time he is corralled as Paul Krauss. Moving up there, give Jackson a couple of yards. It'll be third down and seven. That's Brent McClanahan. And you know something? His dad was in the booth with us tonight throughout the first half. Why? His dad was a teammate in junior college of fearless Frank Gifford, which just goes to show, Frank, that you are gaining on him. Well, have you ever known another player to play at junior college at the age of 12? <laughs> Third down, seven. Delvin Williams, left side. Alan Page gets a hold of him and cuts him off at the 30-yard line, short of the first down. 
another of the new Bo Reich was in the booth in the first half. We never got time to introduce him. Gary Matthews, now of the Atlanta Braves. You played the wrong spot. I think you're probably right. There's Monty Clark. He played it and played it well. Started at the 49ers, went to Dallas, had seven great years with Cleveland, many of them all pro. 48-yard field goal attempt. Steve Nickemeyer, Scott Bull holding. Oh! Little left and short. So, we'll be returning to Candlestick Park, and the Minnesota Vikings will take possession of their own 28-yard line. Baggage from Eastern Flight 399 can be claimed in Area 1. Baggage claim is an airline's last chance to disappoint a customer. There's no better way to ruin a perfect flight than to make you wait for your bags right here. I'm Frank Warman, the president of Eastern Airlines. At Eastern, we believe the baggage claim is also a pretty good place to keep a customer happy. And the best way is to try to have his suitcase get here before he does. It means we really have to hustle. And since we handle over 40 million bags a year, we're bound to goof once in a while. But we're doing our best to cut down on delays, damage, and loss. We know what it means to you to be able to get off the airplane, get your suitcase, and go. Look, there are a lot of airlines out there you can fly besides Eastern. So if we want you to fly Eastern all the time, and we do, we have to earn our wings every day. Kenny Anderson of the Cincinnati Bengals was the most efficient passer in the National Football League last year. He remains one of the finest quarterbacks in pro football. Right there, he hit Chip Myers. Look for that next Monday night as the Bengals, and for them, a must-win game, go against the Oakland Raiders with the best record in football. You know, I've been reading some drivel about how Oakland may not put out against Cincinnati. You're right there. Tell it to John Madden, Al Davis, and the Oakland Raiders. They won't buy it. What did Madden say is so ridiculous I won't even comment on it. And it is just that. Here is Doug Foreman. Doug Foreman. That's back. That's a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down and nine. Tony Klein, Jimmy Webb, both in there defending out of that fine front four of the 49ers. Of course, they lost another good defensive end, Cedric Hartman, a week ago. He had a fractured ankle and underwent surgery. But they had 49 sacks coming into tonight's game. Second down. All it a long eight. There's McClanahan, and McClanahan is corralled out around the 37-yard line. It's going to be third down, a long three. Frank Nunley, who had to replace Bruce Elia, is in the lineup defensively. Now a middle linebacker for the 49ers. And he is playing with a special protective covering on his helmet because he has a fractured cheekbone. Now that's a sad shot. Or Jim Plunkett on the sidelines. He pulled a muscle in his ribcage on Wednesday, but he had been almost booed off the field over the last four weeks. McClanahan, he could not hold on. It would have been a first down. A little long. Dave Washington was right there. The one that Brent could have had. I had mentioned earlier, Frank, that Stanford had won two Rose Bowls. I want no misunderstanding. I didn't want to connote that Plunkett had led them to those two victories. He led them to one. Don Bunce led them to the other. The point I was making was that Stanford had won consecutive Rose Bowls. Playbo, his two previous efforts, very nice, 46 and 47 yards, single safety in the middle, Tony Leonard for the 49ers. Playbo hits another beauty. Leonard at his own 20-yard line. And Leonard covered well, good pursuit there. Robert Miller was down there first, tripped him up. 44-yard punt by Claybo, 8-yard return. Leonard. 
All right, this is this is Anthony Leonard, number 42, and I, I, you know, a lot of people say, why don't you get as much yardage as you can? But he does a great job and almost breaks it to the outside. Now, I like this kind of effort. I like that kind of effort too. First and ten for the 49ers. Just short of their own 19-yard line. Handoff, Delvin Williams, out over the 20, close to the 21. A gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. Let's meet the defensive backs of the Minnesota Vikings. Nate Wright, defensive back, Seaside, California. Nate Allen, defensive back, Georgetown, South Carolina. Jeff Wright, defensive back, United, Minnesota. Paul Krause, safety, Flint, Michigan. We are not watching Nate Allen tonight. He has a sprained ankle. Bobby Bryant is in there. It's second down and eight. Delvin Williams gets away from Sutherland. Look out. Paul Krause made the save at the 40-yard line. It's a 49er first down, and Delvin Williams is really having quite a night. 49ers have been putting on some running show tonight. Remember, they had 173 yards rushing in the first half alone. Look at that hole. Look at Williams paw through. Yeah, Carl Eller had a chance, and they just missed the block, and that's what they've been doing kind of all night. They've been just missing blocks. I mean, tackles, I'm sorry. Blocks are offense. Tackles are defense. Delvin Williams has 124 yards on the night. He needs 17 for his 1,000 yards for the season. Now that was a block, Frank. <laughs> that was a block. Steve Lawson, I believe, left side, number 65, 49ers. Illegal motion. He'll step off five. Steve Lawson, as Howard mentioned earlier, came from Minnesota. Illegal procedure. False start, number 65 on the offense. We have a first down. I was going to say he came from Minnesota, so he probably understands. Alan Page, if you don't get to him quick, you're not going to get him. Look at that graphic. 236 yards between the two 49er backs. Minnesota, a total of 86 yards. I'll tell you, that has always hurt Minnesota in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. They give up the yardage on the ground. Jackson rips off some more. Out to the 47. A gain of 12 yards. Hit there by Bobby Bryant. It'll be second down and three. Frank just made a very important point. As great as that Minnesota front four is and was, even when they were younger, the theory always was you could run right at them, and that was the best way to attack them. You look at Jeff Seaman. He's over there filling the four hole, and roaring by him is young Robert Wilbur Jackson. All right, second down and three. Ball at the 47. Scott Bull coming for Washington, and... He was neatly covered by Bobby Bryant. 4.38 remaining in the third quarter. San Francisco leading by one, 17-16. I like this Scott Bull so far tonight, Howard. I do because he, he's, uh, he's, what he is is a pretty cool dude. He doesn't panic. He hasn't made the big mistake, which the rookie quarterback is so often prone to do. Has had the one interception. It was a diving interception on the part of Paul Krauss. He's hanging in there pretty steady. Third down and three. Washington out to the left. Jim Lash out to the right. Delvin Williams. And Williams is down, I believe, just about a half a yard short of the first down at midfield. Carl Eller closing down to make the stop. And on comes the punting unit for San Francisco. That means Tom Whittem. Dropping deep, number 80, Leonard Willis. There he is. Great speed out of Ohio State, a fourth-round draft pick. This is the first time since 1971 that two 49er backs have gained over 100 yards in the same game. Yeah, they did it a lot of times back in the 50s. <laughs> Whittem going for the sidelines, and he catches it at the 16. Tom Whittem puts Minnesota in a hole at their own 16-yard line with a 34-yarder. We'll be back in just a moment. Roses are red, violets are blue. Light beer from Miller, I love you. 
You've got a third less calories than the regular beer, and really are less filling, which is something to cheer. But what I like above all the rest is the way you taste, you are the best. Yes, blue is the violet and red is the rose, and if you don't believe me, I'm going to break your nose. Like beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Buick and Olds have now made their biggest cars smaller. We still build them like we used to at Lincoln Mercury. This plaque goes into every full-size 77 marquee. Ride engineered by Lincoln Mercury. It tells you every inch of every marquee is dedicated to its famous luxury ride to give you the peaceful feeling of a solid, well-built car. Mercury Marquee. Ride engineered by Lincoln Mercury. <laughs> Saturday, the Arizona 150 Indianapolis car race featuring the battle for the 1976 USAC Driving Championship between Johnny Rutherford and Gordon Johncock in the final race of the season. And the World Professional Skiing Championships, Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Back at Candlestick Park, San Francisco over Minnesota, 17 to 16. We'll be returning, of course, next week. It'll be Oakland and Cincinnati, and of course, Saturday night, NCAA college football, 9 o'clock Eastern time, Arkansas and Texas will get it on. First and 10 for Minnesota. Trailing by one, 350 remaining in the third quarter. Tarkenton all the way. Hangs it up for Rashad. He does not handle. I hope we can get a shot on the sideline. Sammy White. He has a good work, Chester Forty, our peerless director. Sammy hasn't played since he caught that touchdown pass. Let's see if we can find out if he's hurt, that touchdown pass in the first half. I've been watching him. He's walking up down the sidelines. He is not hanging around with the trainer like he was injured or anything. Maybe Bud Grant just wants to take a look at some of his other men. Bob Grimm is in there now, top of your screen, number 26, but certainly Bud Grant knows about him. Draw play, Foreman. Finds a little gap. Works for about four. It'll be second down and six, or third down and six, rather. Well, now it's marked inside the 20. Call it third and seven. Chuck Foreman, who earlier tonight went over the 1,000-yard mark. That's what he has for the evening. But the surprise, or not the surprise either, but the fine showing has been the two running backs for the 49ers. And the showing of the 49er offensive line. Foreman's efficiency isn't measured just in yards gained rushing. We re-emphasize his brilliance as a pass receiver. Third down, seven. Tarkenton. Look out, Fran. Down goes Francis. Tommy Hart. Hart. We saw him earlier in the year against the Rams, and he put on a one-man show down there. He sacked Ram quarterback six times on his own that night on a 10-sack night. And let's look again. Good team effort. Here comes number 74, Cleveland Elam, to make sure Francis didn't go his way. And here comes Tommy Hart. Tommy Hart, many of you might not have known, was a sprinter when he was in college and ran a 9-700. Now he's a defensive end. Crowd loves it. The second sack of the night, 51 on the air. They trail Baltimore by just one. Neil Claybo set to punt. 49ers should get good field position. Tony Leonard is back. Claybo hangs one up and is taken there by Bruce Rhodes. And he is immediately corralled at the 35-yard line. First man down there, Matt Blair. And now the crowd comes alive. They want the 49ers to move in. They have a one-point lead with 2.20 remaining in the third quarter. And we've just gotten word that Sammy White has a slight muscle pull up till now, but Grant has shown no disposition to risk his rookie star. That's why he's on the sidelines. And you can't really blame him. Sammy White's had quite a year coming in at night, 39 receptions, but six of them were touchdowns. All right, here we go. 220 remaining in the third quarter. 49ers playing even, if anything, a little better than the Vikings tonight. Flag down. Delvin Williams. Collected there by Sutherland and Matt Blair, but a whistle blew and a flag fell. Bonnie Clark is some kind of coach, Howard. You know, uh, they're really playing with a rookie quarterback. Everyone knows it. Of course, the Minnesota Vikings know it. They're still out in front, and it just means to me that they, these really solidify that offensive line. Defensively, they've always been fairly sound. They've 
they, I think they boast a little bit of their defensive backs. But all in all, he's really turned the picture around here. Illegal motion against the 49ers. Ronnie Clark talking to his staff upstairs. Who was that? First and 15, ball at the 41 yard line. Jackson, and he breaks to the outside. And look at Wilbur Jackson, what a night he's having. He's finally caught by Wally Hilgenberg. But he gets 13 yards out of it. It'll be second down and two. Well, watch the block. Alan Page now, he goes to the outside, but he's, the, you, as you can see, the offensive end just knocked everyone down. He got mixed up in the flow, and Wilbur Jackson, following his interference, goes all the way down the field. What a boy, Wilbur. They teach him down there in oh, Alabama. Boy, and they are really putting the yardage on tonight against the Vikings. All right, second down and two. Ball at the 28-yard line. Delvin Williams and Williams. Pounds inside the 25, has the first down. Alan Page came around the horn to make the stop for Minnesota. And another first down for the 49ers. You mentioned what a fine coach Monty Clark is, Alex. That's been known around the league for years. While he was working for Don Shula, Shula was openly tub thumping for Monty to get the head coaching job he thought he deserved. And he was one of those interviewed by Carol Rosenblum when Chuck Knox was finally Howard. Little to choose between the two. Delvin Williams needs 16 yards for his 1,000 on the year. This is Wilbur Jackson. I don't believe he got back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. Doug Sutherland is there, and Jeff Seaman at the bottom of the pile. As we're watching this great display tonight by Delvin Williams and Wilbur Jackson, one Hawkins back to Frank Gifford's time with names and and then it was Keysaw Stadium like Joe Perry and Hugh McElhenney. Oh, did they have him? <laughs> Y.A. Tittle. John Henry Johnson. John That's Henry right. Johnson. He had some of his best Nomaly. years here. Leo Nomaly. Bob St. Clair. I just saw him. He's still as big as he used to be, Frank. He still needs that raw steak. Oh, yeah. Second down and 10. Seconds ticking away here in the third quarter. And Elvin Williams slips, regains his feet, as he can do, because he was not touched. He'll have a Third down at about seven coming up. And there is the final second ticking off the scoreboard clock here in the third quarter. You're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. And with the score, Minnesota 16, San Francisco 17 will return after this word from our local station. force wants to destroy the bionic woman. It is alive. Jamie, there's more of them coming. Then. Hi! You know who sent him out there to his grave? Jew, his mother. Somebody walked off with 12,000 bucks that belongs to me. Beretta is out to save a life right after the bionic woman. Wednesday starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. San Francisco area champions of the Ford Dealers of America punt pass and kick competition have just been presented their trophies by Mr. John O'Donnell, San Jose District. The eight-year-old winner is number 65, Bradley Hunter, North Bend, Oregon. The nine-year-old winner, number 61, Robert Mahalani, Pahala, Hawaii. Uh, Ten-year-old winner, number 18, Lane Santiago, Haula, Hawaii. The 11-year-old champion, number 15, Aaron Paulson from Grover City, California. Number 19 won the 12-year-old competition. That's Peter Incavilia, 
Monterey, California, and number 72, Mike Mancini, won the 13-year-old title from Redwood City. Congratulations, the best of luck in the NFC Division semifinals, December the 12th, in New Orleans. That was a good mouthful, Mr. Boy, Gibbon. There, those Hawaiians sometimes can be a little difficult. Great bunch of kids performing here tonight. We begin the fourth quarter at the moment. San Francisco has a one-point lead over Minnesota. San Francisco has a third down. They're at the 21-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings, a third down and seven. Young quarterback going all the way. Scott Bull, the rookie from Arkansas. He's number 19. Faced with a tough situation. And watch out. Hilgenberg came on the blitz. Scott Bull very calmly stepped up in front, but... Meanwhile, downfield, number 87, Jim Lash was being covered well by number 43, Nate Wright. And out comes Steve Mickemeyer. Had a quick look at Lash. He also was the with the Minnesota Vikings last year. This is a big, big field goal, guys. Oh, this could be important. This will put it out of field goal range. For the Vikings, Steve Mickemeyer, a 38-yard attempt. Boy, it's long enough. It's straight enough, oh, and it's good oh. enough. Steve Mickemeyer has really helped the 49er cause, and that moves them out to a four-point lead over Minnesota. I haven't heard them boo. Remember when he hit the field goal post? The goal post? Well, hang around. <laughs> That's the truth. San Francisco playing all-out football tonight. They are mathematically alive in the Western Division of the NFC, but that's about it. Minnesota has clinched their total. As I said, they are mathematically still alive, but it's not very probable. Yeah, but you know this is a, a matter of inches, this game, uh, Frank. Not that kind of an inch, though. Okay, Leonard Willis is going to take it out of the end zone. And Leonard Willis, nifty running, out to the 32-yard line. He made it stick. He got past the 20 and picked up 12 extra yards, and that, of course, is the standard test. Now, let's see what Mr. Tarkenton can do. Let's look at Willis again. If he had kept it up to speed right here, he paused for about a fraction, saw the hole, burst through it, and again, I'll remind you, he has that 9-3 speed, turned it on, and gets the Vikings out over their own 32-yard line. There he is, a fourth-round draft pick out of Ohio State. Grand Tarkenton all the way for the Vikings. And Parkinson hanging it up for Rashad. I don't think Rashad thought that ball was coming his way. He Boy, was, I'll tell, excuse me, Frank. Oh, Cleveland Elam really gave Fran a shot on that play back there. He's all oh. over the quarterback, Elam. In the meantime, on that throw that Frank was just talking about, Rashad turned left and then had to turn right. And Jimmy Johnson, number 37, was right oh. there with him. It's Look at him. You know, yeah, but he could have really have laid it on him, Alex. Yeah. He pulled up on it. Yeah. Well, not really, Frank. Not a all mean and obscene. Now yeah, those two youngsters in the middle of that 49er line are all right. Cleveland Elam 72, Jimmy Webb 74. Second down and 10. A shouting defense here at Candlestick Park. The plan hand in motion. Parking it on the rollout. Oh, Gets the ball out near the 35-yard line for a gain of about three. It'll be third down and seven. Tommy Hart rolled over there along with Jimmy Johnson to make the stop. Well, our mini cam cameraman wandered up in the stands. What has he been drinking or what? What is it with him? Just getting a little tired. <laughs> Bud Grant looking on. Won his eighth division out of nine years last week with a win over Green Bay.
Third down, flags fall. As Foreman goes down, far short of the first down, after the 37, but again, a flag is down. Well, this is the second time we've had the procedure call against the Vikings. That will be declined. Second time we've had the 49ers this year, Gibb. And each time they've given us some show. When they racked up the Rams in the Memorial Coliseum in L.A., 16 to nothing. Wasn't even a contest. No, we didn't. And we didn't think that they were likely to have the successive setbacks that ensued. Two of them so tough, St. Louis and Washington. The only one they really lost by any margin was last week against those same Rams. Claybo sets a punt. Leonard is deep. And Claybo really hits another one high. Flags all over the lot. 46 yard punt. Undoubtedly a clip. Referee Don Wedge looking over the possibilities. Now being marked off against San Francisco. Here's the call. All right, Alex, let's take First a foul. Clipping number 38 on the return. First down. How, now do you, you heard how it. can you pick those things out like that? I mean, I, yeah. I'm all over the field. Yeah. I never get to see that. Well, there it is. They all saw it. Bob Farrell, the clipper. <laughs> and who was the clippy? Who was the it was clippy? Audrey Beeman. First and ten, the 49ers now with a four-point lead, 20 to 16, move on their own 10-yard line. Wilbur Jackson, and what a night he's having, along with Delvin Williams, gets out to the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. This is what I hate to see because this is the most dangerous part of the game, folks, and that's when you when you clip someone, there goes the knees, and of course you don't see it coming, and it's called an L Sammage. Well, why would he do that? Because he's oh, obvious. All right, second down and seven. Ball just short of the 15-yard line. Delvin Williams. And look at Williams. Watch out. If he gets to the clear. Oh, boy, can he accelerate. Out over the 40. First down, Delvin Williams. 27-yard pickup. And Delvin Williams is remaining on the field. He's got his 1,000 yards, but that at this moment is unimportant. What a show that young man has put on tonight. Until tonight, we thought the best single game or running exhibition we had seen in any game this year was rendered by Lydell Mitchell when the Colts crushed the Houston Oilers in Baltimore a few Monday nights back. But tonight, I think Delvin Williams has exceeded even Lydell's performance that night. He's still on the field. He has 1,015 for the season. We'll be back in a moment. This is my first car. Where do I get good auto service without a hassle? Don't you know there's good news round the corner? Good year, wherever you are. Good year, good and close to home. Presenting the Goodyear promise for hassle-free auto service. We do professional work. We only do the work you authorize. We return worn-out parts for your inspection. No hassle, no problems, no fooling. Goodyear tires and Goodyear service bars. More Goodyears in your car. Some of the greatest beaches in the world are not very far away. By Boeing Jetliner. Malibu. Kanapali. St. John. Of course, some people have everything right in their own backyard. But if you don't, and you'd like to be alone, get hold of your airline and get on a Boeing jetliner. There's a lonely beach somewhere in the world waiting for you. Now let's look at what happened on that last run by Delvin Williams when the fine back got hurt. Look, great fake. Page had outside responsibility, and it looked like he thought that Jackson had the ball. Actually, it looked like he tackled Jackson, 
That enabled Williams to spring loose. And now Delvin comes walking off the field. We'll find out the extent of the damage to Delvin as quickly as we can and report it to you. But it was interesting to see that fake when Allen had the outside responsibility. Yeah, that's Alex. right. He did have outside responsibility. And what Jackson did was, was terrific was he, he finally ended up grabbing him. He was the <laughs> tackler. So Delvin Williams over the 1,000-yard mark officially has 155 yards on the night. That gives him 1,014 for the season. He does not appear to be too seriously injured. We'll be checking on that later. It is the ankle, not the knee. On a first down, Paul Coker, another rookie from Mississippi, over the left side, gets a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. This team has given us some show tonight. We hope they're giving you the same show because they're playing a great game, the 49ers. In fact, the whole city has been giving us a good time. Today, Alex and I, walking the streets of San Francisco, ran across Carl Malden and Richard Hatch playing a scene in that hit ABC series. Second down and eight. Ball well, just over the 43-yard line. This is Jackson, and he runs right into Doug Southern and sprawls forward for a yard. It'll be third down and six. Williams has 155 yards tonight. Jackson, 141. Ballpark is going crazy. They put up the figures on Delvin Williams on the electric scoreboard, and the fans are standing as one and giving Williams an ovation. Oh, I just couldn't hear myself at all. Right on third down, a flag flies, and we are going to have a delay of game called against the 49ers. Uh, it's starting to say the 49ers have rushed for a 300 yards against the Minnesota Vikings. Jackson has 141, Hofer has three, Bull has one. As I told you, Williams had 155. Wow. Penalty, delay a game, moves the 49ers back inside their own 40. It'll be third down, a long 11. We have 11.22 remaining in the fourth quarter. San Francisco over Minnesota, 2016. Oh, and Matt Blair almost got there for the interception. That could have been the big mistake that Young Bull has avoided all night. That's the kind of pass that was picked off twice by Prentice McRae against Joe Namath, which we showed a week or so ago as the plays of the week. Matt Blair was positioned to take that and move right on in. Scott Bull walked to the sidelines. Uh, I bet the heart was in the throat because he saw that big number 59. Matt Blair almost come up with it. Here's Tom Whittem on fourth down. Deep Leonard Willis. Single safety. The Vikings have 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Bobby Bryant, number 20, was going for it. Fine punt by Whittem. Punt. And it was Paul Hofer, the rookie from Mississippi, down for the tackle. We'll be right back. Sometimes I cannot bear to come out of my bus. I suppose it's because I like so much my private moments. The feeling of being apart from everyone in my own retreat. Or being alone with Catherine Deneuve for a few moments. I think we must pull ourselves with little indulgences. Like Chanel number no. five, bass powder and spray cologne. We have no words for this pleasure. We know where it is. Chanel. These are the cars that Ford built. They all come with a starter drive that Ford built. And instead of four cams, a Ford Motor Company starter drive has five cams, so it should last 50% longer. These are the starter drives that start the cars that Ford built. Ford built. It's a lot of things that are good built. It's simple. Ford wants to be your car company. Earlier, we told you about Kenny Anderson. And at that time, you looked at him throwing the chip fires. 
But his favorite target is the young man from San Diego State, number 85, Isaac Curtis. That combination will certainly be prominent next Monday night at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum as the Bengals go in against the Oakland Raiders at 11-1, the Bengals at 9-3, and, and the Steelers still hopeful of getting into the playoffs. The biggest game of the year for the Bengals. That was Delvin Williams, and you saw some of the handiwork of the trainers taping up that right ankle. First and 10, Parkinson hands off to Robert Miller. He runs right into Cleveland Elam. He maybe got a, a yard out of it. It'll be second down at nine. Sometimes I think, Frank, the trainers are more remarkable than the performers. Well, they have to be. You know, there's a lot of things that goes on in football players' heads. Trainers but, know them better than the doctors, really. Here comes Elam. <laughs> Come yes. back here, you. <laughs> so to Robert Miller, a second-year man out of Kansas. Parkinson, and Parkinson right. goes down again. Tommy Hart once again. What a pass rush. This is exactly what we saw against the Rams. Only that night, they sacked the quarterback ten times. Six by Tommy Hart, two by Cleveland Elam, two by the absent Cedric Hartman. Now, this was the third sack on Francis tonight. That's a total of 52 on the year for the 49ers. They tie the Baltimore Colts for the league lead in that department. There's a little youngster on a very cool night. They're watching a super football game. Parkinson again on third down. Fires into a crowd. Uh, Bob Graham had a hold of it and could not handle it. They just threw it into a group. Jimmy Johnson was in there, and he is down on the field. Now he's up and walking off. Let's, Let's look at it again. Again, Parkinson. Let's look at it again. Parkinson rolling out to his left. That was Billy Harper putting the pressure on it. Jimmy Johnson, I believe, got a hand around Ooh. it. Jimmy Johnson limped off. And here comes Neil Clavo on fourth down. The 49ers should get good field position once again. There's Tony Leonard. He's a fifth-round draft pick out of Virginia Union. Labo, Leonard. Flag down, we're going to have another clip. 40-yard punt. And I believe we're going to have another clip. Kermit Johnson, I don't believe it, got in front. Oh, and that hurts. They would have had the ball out of midfield. Number 47, I believe, Kermit Johnson. There it is, right there. Late behind. So the 49ers lead the Minnesota Vikings 2016, 9.52 remaining in the fourth quarter. They'll have a first and 10 at their own 33. A man who's known for his pleasures. These two I train, and this one I drink. Light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. But what I love best is the way it tastes. What a pleasure. Right, guys? <laughs> am I a trainer, or am I a trainer? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. The story at Candlestick Park in San Francisco on a cool night. Temperatures expected to go into the 30s tonight. With 9.52 remaining in the fourth quarter, San Francisco leads the Vikings 20 to 16. <laughs> I'm going to be married Saturday, and, and uh, Howard and Al, how about uh, the advice? Any advice? Well, let's go with you, kid. Oh, my advice is don't do it. <laughs> Uh-oh, Emmy's here, Howard. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. First and 10. Wilbur Jackson, and 
Brad Jackson continues to grind out the yardage. He's out to the 39-yard line. It's a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Let me make this perfectly clear, Frank Gifford. As you know, I'm the happiest married man in America. 32 years of dedication and devotion. I wonder about Emmy, though. <laughs> and He's five. here with me tonight. Our house mother always oh, traveling with us. Second down. Oh, man. All Hofer was really popped. Number 69, Doug Sutherland. Doug Sutherland having quite a game for the Vikings tonight. But they have been being run all over the ballpark. Well, you know, it's so strange to be able to run as much as they have on the uh, Vikings because they know they have a rookie quarterback. The 49ers have a rookie quarterback, and they know primarily they were going to run tonight, yet they've done a good job on the ground all night. Third down, there was a loss of the yard. Third down and six. And Wilbur Jackson collected there by Carl Eller, and that will be fourth down. Well, it's, you know, there's a lot of things you can't do against the Vikings. One of them is, of course, do this play, which is kind of a draw play, like a fake pass, because, the, well, in this case, Eller's just going to the inside and spots him and comes right down with him. But, but you can't really run against them. They've been around so long that that kind of uh, offensive play isn't worth, I don't think, too much. Brings up a fourth down. Tom Whittem, Leonard Willis, dropping deep. There is Willis. Not large, but he has that great speed. Willis finds a handle at the 34 and is immediately ooh, smothered. Ooh, ooh. A hustling bunch of 49ers tonight. All right, let's look at this game in perspective. In their last five possessions, the Vikings have given the ball away after three downs. They have had to punt. Now go back to the top of our telecast where we prescribed in effect the whole game. We said it would be Tarkenton and Foreman but we pointed out the San Francisco defense. That's been the story, except for the San Francisco offense. Gift Foreman on a first and ten, turns the corner, and now Phillips hustles up from his strong safety position to take him out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Gain of three, second down, seven. In other words, the San Francisco defense has contained Minnesota, the net result, the Minnesota defense has been out there often. Jimmy Webb appears to be hurt, number 74. And San Francisco, given offensive opportunity on offensive opportunity, has capitalized with the brilliance of their running game tonight. We'll be right back. You know what kind of parts I put in my VW? Motorcraft from Ford. Wow, there's some tough parts. Remember those taxi test commercials? They put Motorcraft batteries, shocks, oil filters, tune-up parts in 150 taxis. After 3 million miles, less than 1% of the parts couldn't take it. Tough enough for taxis, tough enough for me. Oh. <laughs> Ask for Motorcraft where you buy parts or service your car. They're tested tough. If anybody loves trains, it's me, Johnny Cash. You know, if your boy's under 10 like mine is, he needs a big Lionel like this Black River Freight. Lionel also makes HO gauge trains for older kids, like this Burlington 181. But for smaller hands, the big Lionel is easier to handle than put on the track. This Christmas, get your boy a train that's built for the way young boys play. A big, rugged Lionel. Lionel, the big train for small hands. Wilbur Jackson, part of a tremendous rushing tandem for the 49ers tonight, along with Delvin Williams. Meanwhile, his teammate, Jimmy Webb is being administered to out on the field. He was shaken up on that last play. There's Delvin Williams. Apparently, not too bad of a bruise on his ankle. That's his story for tonight. He's Plus over a thousand yards. Seems to be walking it off. And here comes Jimmy Webb. Second year man out of Mississippi State, a number one draft pick of a year ago, and a fine football player. Don't forget, Saturday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. A shootout down in that Southwestern Conference, Arkansas at Texas. Second down and six. The ball at the 32-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. Seven minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. 
Robert Miller, 35. Chuck Foreman, 44. Those are the setbacks, and I think one of the Vikings went early. Right side of the line. And it's being marked off. False start. Offense, number 62. Second down. Ed White, the right guard, number 62. Coming back this week, he has been out of the Vikings lineup with a sprained ankle. He played his college football right across the bay. The University of California did Ed White. Second down and 11. Ball at the 27-yard line. Make it the 28. Here comes Foreman. And Foreman cutting back, and he runs into that 49er pursuit. Gets out to the 32-yard line. It's going to be third down and seven. You can really tell when, when the ball club is playing because uh, if, you, if you look at the San Francisco 49 defensively, there isn't one guy knocking someone down. There's three or four guys all the time. You know they're really up and they really want the ball game. Uh, Minnesota's making mental mistakes they haven't made all season tonight. Offsides, things like that. All right, Sammy White, the fine rookie receiver, remains on the bench. Bob Grimm and Ahmad Rashad, the wide receivers. Over the middle is complete to Bob Grimm. And hustling up there to make the stop is Ralph McGill, but it's the first down for Minnesota. 44-yard line. First down to 44. And Bob Grimm, who was cut by the Chicago Bears, picked up by Bud Grimm, is getting his shot tonight with Sammy White, a slight muscle pull on the bench. Minnesota with an edge in time. I wouldn't have believed that. That I, I that. don't believe. Yeah. But they trail by four. Let's recheck that statistic. Parkinson. Uh oh, and he hangs it up, and we are going to have an interference call, I'm pretty sure, against Jimmy Johnson. Flag is down. Parkinson, again under pressure, had to dump it off. Jimmy Johnson was all tied up with a mod with shot. He said, No, I wasn't. It doesn't sound to be sitting in his pocket, bro. Oh. Illegal use of hands. Johnson, illegal use of hands, automatic first down. Going to be marked off from the line of scrimmage. So, Minnesota, first and ten, their own 49-yard line. There it is. That is what you call calling it by a hair. Oh, and Robert Miller. Gets about three out of it. It'll be second down and seven, and it was Bill Sandifer who rushed right by Robert Miller, almost got the handoff from Tarkenton. Bill Sandifer is quite a story. Number one draft pick in 74. Hurt his knee. Missed much of that year. Rushing yardage. San Francisco has 337 on the ground. Minnesota, 104. Second and seven. All at the 48-yard line of the 49ers. Tarkenton. It's Rashad. Short of the first down. Down inside the 44-yard line. Covered there by Bruce Taylor. Report on Jimmy Webb, fellas. He's got a sprained ankle. Not expected to return tonight. Just coming into our booth. The great executive producer of television, Quinn Martin. And as I look at Minnesota which finds the first down most wanted now. I'm reminded of a Saturday night show. There's Jimmy Webb, most wanted, starring your old friend Bob Stack, who taught you how to trap shoot, Frank. Well, he taught me how to ski. Rosemary did. That was it. Third and three. <laughs> Cleveland Elam gets in on Tarkenton. He gets rid of the ball, and the flag is down. Robert Miller was there. Bob Grimm was there. 
And Dave Washington, one linebacker there, was back defending. One of the 49ers is down. Injured. That's Ralph McGill, I believe, number 49. I can see the nine. And indication that was the call is going to go against Minnesota. Hard hitting game tonight. 537 remaining in the fourth quarter and down on the field Ralph McGill will be back. The new Quintrix 2 color picture tube from Panasonic brings you a very lifelike picture. Because Quintrix 2 is our new inline picture tube with an extra pre-focus lens that concentrates and focuses the electron beam to bring you Panasonic's sharpest picture ever. So lifelike, you may even feel you're part of the picture. Quintrix 2. One more reason Panasonic is just slightly ahead of our time. Fourth down, penalty against Minnesota, declined by the 49ers. Neil Claybo to kick, and 49ers don't even have a deep man. They know Claybo is very good at kicking to the out of bounds. This time he just hangs it up. Pretty good. Boy, and it takes a Minnesota. I don't understand that. The 49ers were not going with their blocking unit. They did not have a man deep. Could have been just a mistake. Let's take a look at that penalty. This is Ahmad Rashad, the illegal use of hands call. He's in there against yeah, Bruce he's, Taylor. He was pushing off, no <laughs> question about that. He got him out of the way. Here I am. Nobody around me. I can't understand why. He's lying right over there. <laughs> Meanwhile, Talkington was running for his life. So true. All right, first and 10 for the 49ers. They have a 2016 lead with 522 remaining in the fourth period. They begin from their own five-yard line. Over Jackson. Continues to pile up the yardage. This time only a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Over Jackson, when he was at University of Alabama, he was alternating at Bear Bryant's backfield down there. And nevertheless, as a senior, he gained over 1,500 yards, averaging a little over 70 yards, seven yards a carry. Well, the Big Bear had so many shock troops during Jackson's term that and nothing but players to call upon. Kept fresh ones in all the time. Seven yard line, second down and seven. Oh, this time he runs into the big man in the middle, Jeff Seaman. And he'll lose about a half a yard. We've talked about Jeff Seaman during the course of the evening, the young man from Stanford University, top draft choice, not too many years ago, still very young, and he's come into his own as one of the finest middle linebackers in the league. They're very well fortified with young linebackers, Matt Blair and, of course, Seaman, also Amos Martin and Fred McNeil. Third down and eight, a loss of, yard, of one yard. Delvin Williams back at the ball game, and he's stretched out of the five-yard line, the original line of scrimmage, and here comes the punting unit. That means Tom Whittem and the 49ers will have to brace themselves down here. They would not want to get a block down here. There is little time left in the game, yet plenty of time for the Minnesota Vikings, who should have good field position after this punt. 3.43 left and counting down. We're going down to the wire again. Willis is deep. With him right at the back of the end zone. They're going for the return, and it's a low kick, the kind you can run back. Taken there by Autry Beeman, and Beeman rambles inside of the 25-yard line. And 49ers are in a little bit of trouble with 3.22 remaining in the game. Minnesota has a first and 10, 24-yard line of the 49ers. And we'll quickly pause five seconds and allow our local stations all along the line to identify themselves. First and 10, Minnesota Vikings. They trail the San Francisco 49ers 2016. Graham in motion, Chuck Foreman. Foreman, nuts back, runs his forward, 
gets about six. It'll be second down and four. Hard-hitting football game. Minnesota came in rather lifeless at the beginning of this game. 49ers running all over them, up, down, sideways, and in the course of doing that, 49ers rolled up 339 yards to Minnesota's 110. At one point, it was a 10-0 lead for the 49ers. But it is down to four, and Minnesota is threatening. Second down and four. Ball at the 19-yard line of the 49ers. Foreman again. Skip Vanderbunt, number 52, over there to make the stop, short of the first down. 49ers have played a spectacular game defensively. We've got another injury now to a 49er on the field. Cleveland Elam is down now for the 49ers. Jimmy Webb is oh, already on the bench. And they've lost Cedric Hardman for the year. How much can they take? Hardman broke an ankle last week. Webb hobbled with a sprained ankle on the sidelines. Now Elam, another fine second-year man, is down on the field. We have 2.34 remaining here in the fourth quarter at Candlestick Park. San Francisco 20, Minnesota 16. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Walt Garrison, and I don't smoke, but I still enjoy tobacco. Smokeless tobacco, like skull here. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum, and I get full tobacco pleasure. And since I don't light up, I can use it doing almost anything. Let's hit him. Yeah. So go smokeless with Skoll, Copenhagen, or Happy Days Men. The tobaccos you don't have to smoke to enjoy. Cleveland Elam coming off the field. There he's being assisted off. And he is limping. Alex, you got a show coming up for ABC, a children's show, I understand. Well, well it's this Wednesday. Once again, everybody, I'm Chris Berman, and welcome to Monday Night Memories. Tonight, we'll take a look back at two games featuring four-time Super Bowl participants, the Minnesota Vikings and the Pittsburgh Steelers. In 1976, the Vikings were in the middle of a seven-year string of NFC Central Division titles, while in 1979, the Steelers boasted seven straight AFC Central titles. We'll return to both teams' glory days when the Vikings traveled to face upstart San Francisco in 1976 and the Steelers visited division rival Houston in 1979. We'll be back with both games right after these words. By week 12 of the NFL's 1976 season, eventual NFC champion Minnesota had already clinched first place in the Central Division. At stake for them in a Monday night battle with San Francisco, would be the home field advantage in the playoffs, if you consider it an advantage to play in the mid-December tundra of Metropolitan Stadium. The Vikings had an explosive offense. Fran Tarkenton, Chuck Foreman, and Ahmad Rashad would propel Minnesota to its fourth Super Bowl appearance. And the veteran Purple People Leader defensive line of Jim Marshall, Carl Eller, and Alan Page routinely disabled opposing offenses. San Francisco's offense was already crippled. Quarterback Jim Plunkett couldn't play after he injured his side in a midweek practice, and defensive end Cedric Hardman broke an ankle a week earlier and would not suit up either. Healthy for the 49ers was its rushing attack. Delvin Williams and Wilbur Jackson were both threats to run 1,000 yards in a given year. This was a must-win game for San Francisco. One more loss after four in a row would eliminate them from playoff competition. A win for San Francisco could help the 49ers to their first winning season since 1972. While a 
picturesque Bay Area sunset was the serene setting outside of San Francisco's Candlestick Park. Inside, two playoff contenders were anything but congenial. San Francisco's Monty Clark was in his first and only season as 49ers head coach after spending five years advising the Miami Dolphin offensive line. The newest student in Clark's starting lineup, untested Scott Bull. The Arkansas rookie replaced injured 49er quarterback Jim Plunkett. Bull's last start was a New Year's Day Cotton Bowl victory against the Georgia Bulldogs. This time, the Bulldogs were in his backfield. Running back Delvin Williams, number 24, and Wilbur Jackson formed one of the NFL's most potent ground games. On this night, the 49ers faced Jim Marshall, Alan Page, and a veteran Minnesota defense known as the Purple People Eaters. But the first course proved to be a little too much for Minnesota to stomach. Delvin Williams would rush for 1,203 yards in 1976, a new San Francisco record. He went on to earn all pro honors that year, the NFL's number three rusher behind legends O.J. Simpson and Walter Payton. Wilbur Jackson, number 40, was more of a meat and potatoes runner, yet quite reliable to bring home the gravy. Jackson scored the game's first touchdown, culminating a 51-yard drive as San Francisco quickly established a running game that would take the early pressure off of Scott Bull. Opposing quarterbacks could rarely escape 49er defensive pressure, not with number 53 Tommy Hart around. Hart's 16 sacks led the team, and he was named the starter in the Pro Bowl. Another All-Pro, Cleveland Elam, number 72, and Jimmy Webb combined for 21 and a half more sacks in 1976. And an occasional belly flop. Excuse me, Miss Manners. While quarterback Fran Tarkenton wasn't always a sitting duck, he frequently found his wings clipped. The 49er Gold Rush led the league in sacks and treated running backs with similar disdain. San Francisco's gang tackling style slowed even the great Chuck Foreman in the first quarter. However, Foreman did go on to run for 93 yards in the game. The 49ers next possession netted a 45-yard field goal by Steve Mickemeyer, increasing San Francisco's lead to 10 to nothing. Tarkenton could do no right against the 49ers. He tried tossing a glider, but San Francisco's radar detected it early. Tarkin had completed less than half his passes in the game, and the Vikings were forced to punt seven times. While teammates grew frustrated, Tarkenton remained cool, and eventually Minnesota's sleeping offense caught more than a glimpse of success. Wake-up calls were placed at Tarkenton's wide receivers. And finally, the connection was free of distortion. Tarkenton first singled out number 28, Ahmad Rashad, the all-time Minnesota reception leader. On the other side, Tarkenton lined up Sammy White, voted the NFL Rookie of the Year in 1976, and the Vikings' number two receiver of all time. This touchdown brought the Vikes to within three points, 10 to seven. Then Tarkenton went right back to Rashad, who was finding a home behind the 49er defense. Although this was Ahmad Rashad's first season in Minnesota, his timing with Tarkenton was impeccable. A replay of this touchdown shows how Rashad occupied cornerback Bobby Taylor until the last possible moment, then broke free to meet a perfect touchdown pass. With a little more than a half remaining, Tarkin and stole San Francisco's momentum and their advantage. The Vikings.
November nights in San Francisco are known to be a little bit chilly, but the 49ers weren't about to let their offense cool off. They couldn't afford to. Minnesota already had a three-point lead and was impressive passing the ball early in the game. As the second quarter neared completion, San Francisco coaches plotted a strategy designed to provide the 49ers with the upper hand at halftime. No secret here, San Francisco would continue running the ball against the Vikings. Backup quarterback Scott Bull was a capable replacement for Jim Plunkett. The ground game, though, is the spinach that gives the San Francisco offense its muscle. Delvin Williams and Wilbur Jackson combined for almost 2,000 yards in 1976. Williams was the first San Francisco back in 17 years to gain 1,000 yards in a season. But as the first half came to a close, Bull was forced to open it up. There was no time to flaunt a clock-eating rushing attack. This is one of the more efficient ways to move downfield in a hurry. Nate Wright was the guilty party here, interfering with San Francisco receiver Gene Washington. The ball was spotted at the one, where Scott Bull demonstrated the most direct way to get from point A to point B. Bull scored the first touchdown of his NFL career, giving San Francisco a 17-13 halftime lead. The matchup of the veteran Viking defense against the rookie quarterback had yet to turn into the mismatch most expected. But beginner's luck began to fade for Bull in the second half. Vikings pass rush left Bull no options, and Minnesota's linebackers began filling holes once owned by 49er runners. The real Minnesota defense had finally surfaced, a defense that makes its own breaks by putting pressure on the quarterback. NFL all-time interception leader Paul Krause, number 22, swiped this Scott Bull pass. Fran Tarkenton once again was in position to give Minnesota the lead but the Viking offense sputtered. Passes skidded off fingertips. Minnesota was forced to settle for a Fred Cox field goal, still trailing San Francisco by a point. But stopping the 49er running game would be tougher than completing a New York Times crossword puzzle. Pro Bowl wide receiver Gene Washington caught only one pass this night, but he wasn't needed for any more. Running back Wilbur Jackson joined Delvin Williams in gaining more than 150 yards, marking only the third time in league history that two backs on the same team gained at least 150 yards in one game. This run by Jackson set up a 38-yard field goal attempt for Steve Mickemeyer. The kicker made his second three-pointer of the night, and San Francisco extended its lead to 20-16 to midway through the fourth quarter. The 49er offense finally ran out of gas, and 49er punter Tom Whittem ran out of footing. Fox's 33-yard punt gave the Vikings good field position at the San Francisco 47-yard line. 119 remained, and with Minnesota trailing by four, Tarkenton had only the end zone to shoot for. The scrambler appeared trapped for a 23-yard loss, but as he did for 18 years, Tarkenton served only the minimum sentence. He took a 15-yard intentional grounding penalty instead of the sack, stopping the clock in the process. Tarkenton then completed two passes, this one to Bob Grimm, landing the Vikings on the San Francisco 31. Time was not on Minnesota's side. With only three seconds remaining, Tarkenton hoped for one more miracle from his golden arm. Mel Phillips deflected Tarkenton's pass, but an illegal procedure penalty was called against the Vikings before the snap. The clock was reset, 
Minnesota was granted one more life. Sammy White couldn't get to the ball, and this time the game was over. The 49ers went on to their first winning season since 1972. Meanwhile, the Vikings would make it all the way to Super Bowl XI, their fourth Super Bowl appearance in eight years.